Welcome to the Capture Life Pulse Virtual Users Conference 2019. My name is T.W. Woodward and I will be your host on today's journey. So why do we need a virtual users conference and why do we need a company like Capture Life? In other words, why are you here today listening to this great lineup of industry leaders? I spent uh, 20 years in the volume photo industry, specifically working on this digital transition. The common thread throughout today's sessions is that these speakers know that our customers are changing. And all of these forward thinking photographers and lab directors and industry leaders are eager to meet the customer on their smartphones where they're connected to family and friends, sharing professional images and spending money. As professional photographers, we need to deliver what our changing consumers want, whether that's a print package or specialty products delivered right to their door, or a digital image, a choice of backgrounds, or a package of digital images. We not only need to deliver the products that they want, but we also need to provide the experience that our customers expect. And more and more, they're expecting the experience on a mobile device. I'm not gonna go on and on here. If you wanna hear me talk, I'm the host of the Hanging Pixels podcast. You can find the Hanging Pixels podcast on any client like iTunes or Stitcher or TuneIn or Spotify. Uh, go out and listen to it. Today, I'm here to facilitate this program and let the wonderful lineup of industry leaders do the talking. But please stick around for the last session, that one's mine. I'm gonna take you through the workflow of tomorrow. I'm actually gonna take customer information, uh, payment, and I'm gonna snap the picture right from an iPad, and I'm gonna use the new Capture Life filter pack to create rich content and deliver it right to a customer's smartphone all in a matter of minutes. So, enjoy the program and stick around to see what's coming right around the corner. This is an awesome workflow and a complete game changer. Today, we've got uh, Gary Pajau from the Dead Pixel Society, who's gonna give the state of the industry address. We've got Derek Tyler from group, the Group Photographers Association talking about strategic value of digital products, specifically for labs. We've got uh, Ryan Sapatka from Focused On Forever talking about how his company has curated the customer experience and added digital to enhance that overall experience. We've got Robert St. Marie talking about uh, the automation of in-app purchases on smartphones, as well as a program that's near and dear to his heart, which we're calling Backgrounds with a Cause, uh, where some of the proceeds go back to uh, a specific cause. Well, we're going to meet with Jim Alsup from LDS Photography about how he's used Capture Life to surge ahead of his competition in his area. We're going to talk to Kevin Cook about GF Crew and that model uh, in conjunction with Capture Life events and uh, how he's used that to enter the gig economy, specifically with uh, youth action and event photography. We're going to talk uh, as well with Walt Smith from Impact Images. Uh, Walt's out there pushing the envelope of what uh, he can do with digital and how he's selling groups. And then finally, we'll get to that session, my session, uh, where we'll talk about this workflow of tomorrow. Uh, so to kick it all off, let's turn it over to uh, Gary Pajau from the Dead Pixel Society. Uh, let's switch it over. Thanks for joining us, and I'll be through. I'll be with you throughout the program. So stick with us. You're going to enjoy it. Thanks. We're here with Gary Pajau from the Dead Pixel Society and from Info Circle LLC. Hi, Gary. Hey, TW. Uh, briefly for our listeners or our viewers today, I should say, Gary and I have. Um, He's been a guest on the Hanging Pixels podcast uh, a few times. We've had a blast talking about trends in the photo industry, what we're seeing uh, currently happening and how everything's moving forward. So we thought it would be a great idea here at Capture Life to have Gary come on and, and really set the tone for the Capture Life Virtual Users Conference for 2019. Gary, thanks for coming on. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, CW. It's great to be here. I'm going to hand it off to you, and so Gary, let it rip. Okay, um, well, if we want to move on to the next one, we're going to be talking about some industry trends, primarily what, you know, to keep this within the time frame and to keep it kind of high level, we're going to be talking about the top six trends affecting the professional photography industry. So let's uh, run to the next one. Uh, 
just a few things, again, trying to keep it high level so you can kind of plan your strategy and not necessarily get into the weeds of uh, your tactical plan, but you know, kind of what's happening out there. And the six items that I've set aside for today's presentation are digital directions, consumer choice, the service economy, consolidation and investment and smart pictures. And I think all six of these items will become increasingly important to school picture firms, uh, volume photography firms, basically anybody who is in the photography business who is actually making it a business, right? You're not a, you're not a, uh, a person just shooting for fun or maybe throwing up a gallery here and there. So first let's talk about digital directions. And next, there we go. There we go. So, so the thing that's really changed over the years is photography is really now a digital first uh, phenomenon. Uh, it wasn't always that way. And in some cases, the professional photography business has still kind of followed the analog paradigm of capture, process, proof, distribute, and share. I mean, it's kind of been along those models. And that's not necessarily been a bad thing, but what's happened now that we're in a fully digital environment, um, each one of those areas provides an opportunity for not only enhancement, but commerce and product offerings. And sometimes it's going to skip over different parts of those segments. For example, you know, you may be into a, a situation where uh, you're going to be involved in digital capture, let's say at a, at a wedding, and it's going to be go immediately to share because your value proposition to your brides and the groom is that you're just going to shoot some pictures and put them in a gallery, right? So that's the value proposition. Um, in, in, in other photographers value proposition, it's going to be, I'm going to capture and then I'm going to process the images and then I'm going to provide an output of some sort, whether it's digital or print. So what's happened is there's been different uh, value proposition business and services that have been built up along taking advantage of all those different opportunities. For example, a few years ago, the, uh, the moms with the cameras exploded in the uh, pro photography space. And you know they basically sold value packages to brides where they would basically provide a USB or, or a CD or a DVD of images after the event. And then what happened was, is the uh, brides realized they always intended to make some sort of photo album out of it, a wedding album of some sort, and they never did. And so there actually became sort of a cottage industry of labs or retailers or even photographers who would approach, who would, who would find these brides and they called them orphan brides and would actually <laughs> create packages for them, right? So the idea there is, is that was something that, not ex that never existed before. That was not something that, you know, when the professional photography space existed, you never had someone go back into a photographer's finished photos and make something else out of them. So that's the sort of um, opportunity that opened up with digital is you now after capture, you can change backgrounds, you can add templates, you can add uh, stickers or however, whatever the, uh, the, the customer wants. And that's something that has really upset a lot of the traditional uh, value in the market. Uh, for example, not, uh, not any different than say, how streaming has affected the music business. Right. Sure. And I, you know, Gary, I'd argue that it's, our consumers are getting used to that as an experience, the ability to use filters and overlays and stickers, like you said, and, and the instant sharing, the ability, it's, these are some of the things, I think that's what you're alluding to here with these trends. Um, our consumers are getting used to it. And if we lag behind as professionals, we're going to run into some problems. Well, they're going to expect it. It's going to be, you know, table stakes for, for what the offering is. That's what they're going to expect to do. They're, they want to meme it. They want to do different things with it. So, yeah, agreed. So that kind of dovetails into the next slide, which is um, consumer choice. Uh, consumers today are more knowledgeable than ever, thanks to the internet. They have more information than ever about making a buying decision than ever before. They know, you know, in some cases, they even know the margin, right? So if you show up at a, uh, a wedding, for example, 
you know, they know how much your Canon EOS cost and how much your lens costs. And so they figure, well, you ought to be charging X amount of money. And it's, and so the photographer is going to have to figure out, um, you know, how to distinct, how to justify their, their value proposition. Right. And, and a lot of photographers, you see, yes, I'm showing up and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, photographing your event for an hour, an hour and a half, but I'm really bringing with me 10, 12, 15 years of experience. And that's what you're paying for. So, and I'm going to get into that a little bit. I just want to dwell on this consumer choice thing because I think it's important because not only is that information about the business process available, but also about, you know, ratings. Ratings are very important in service industries. And you have to be able to cultivate those ratings and you have to be able to uh, use them to your advantage because that is, you know, peer-to-peer -peer ratings are very, very important for a consumer to choose when they're going to buy something. Most people just take it as, as, an, as a, uh, you know, as a given that there's going to be a review of someone that they're going to uh, uh, partake with, especially when you have, we've all seen the articles on Petapixel and whatever about, the various photographers who, you know, take on more business than they can or they scam brides and that makes the news and that, and that makes everyone look bad. So, you know, that's part of being involved with having consumers choose you is developing that reputation so that you can overcome the objections about you're too expensive or you're not, you're not really as good as you think you are or whatever. I mean, that, I mean, that's part of, informing that consumer choice. Yeah, understood. So moving on, um, the other thing that's changing is the service economy aspect of it. Is that, you know, as I mentioned before, you've got, you have to be able to not only sell the product, but the service and how you're providing it. Are you providing a digital option for your pictures? Are you letting mom or dad change the background on the school photo if they want? Are you letting mom or dad add a splash of color and a zigzaggy graphic to the kids' sports photos? Because that, you know, in the photography business, there was much more concern about copyright back in the day, that whatever the photographer captured was sacrosanct. That was, and that's still true. The law technically hasn't changed in the sense that it's still, unless the photographer gives away the rights, it's still their, still their work, but the photographer, but the consumers aren't accepting that they want to be able to do these things. So that's part of being a service in a commodity market. And unfortunately photography has become somewhat of a commodity market because you, everyone's got a camera. Everyone's heard that. Right. And, and you and I both can talk for ages about the difference between a, DSLR and a mirrorless camera and an iPhone uh, 11 and what the different uh, capabilities between that. But, you know, every time Apple comes out with a, an ad saying this ad was shot in an iPhone 11, yep. it kind of just uh, disses, if you will, a DSLR or whatever, because you know, you and I both know that, you know, studio lighting and things like that that really matter for a pro are very difficult to do with a smartphone but you won't you won't see that in an ad yeah i'd say so, this is it this is the the experience and expertise of the photographer more than anything those ads were shot with professionals that have been shooting videos for 20 years exactly. you know like <laughs> they, exactly. i saw the robotic arms that they were using to move that phone around in in that last video with Ariana Grande or one of those people and it was like man that wasn't shot with an iPhone in, in a girl's bedroom right right exactly I mean you and again it goes back to what I was saying before you're talking about 10 to 15 years of experience brought that photographer to that point of shooting yep. that video with that iPhone so you know we've all experienced the service economy right it, it, if you're feeling particularly self-abusive you can have McDonald's delivered to your home via deal that. <laughs> Right. That's right. Um, although I do love my McRib. Um, but even in photography, there are now services where you can rent a photographer, right? If you're having a family event and as, as, as the consumer, you don't want to uh, take time to worry about capturing the event. You can hire photographers for 50 to $75 an hour. There's a like, company called Sweet Escapes does this. There, there's yep. a few other companies that do this where it's basically, you know, rent a photographer. And 
that's a that's a great opportunity for you know people to get their you know learn their chops and actually and uh, suggest that actually capturing an event does have value. So I'm not knocking that at all. There are people who do because they don't like the hourly rate or they don't think the photographer makes enough or the photographer's excited. But at least it's deter it's saying there's a value to having the service, which I think is something as the photography industry moves into this market it has to be maintained that, that, you know, there's no freebies, right. That, that, yep. you know, I mean, I mean, everyone's seen, you know, again, on the photography forums where somebody posts a message saying, you know, take a picture of my blah, blah, and you'll get free exposure. And that's great. And it'll build your right. portfolio. All right. And, you know, as you know, that's bunk for most photographers. They don't, they don't need that. So I don't know if, TW want to add in on that. So, um, I, I, you know, you and I talked about this in the last podcast we did together, and I, and I think this is going to be a, you, you've hit on what's going to be a theme moving forward, which is the gig economification of the photo industry, right? Yeah. And and what you just said is, is anything moved towards this gig economy, where in the gig economy is any. Anybody can jump in their car and go make a few bucks with Uber or with, um, you know, delivering groceries or delivering McDonald's from one house to another, right? That's, that's the whole gig economy. What you just said is when we, if we go back to that last slide, when we're looking at the service economy and how, the, how photography and how professional photography fits into that, we, talking about trends right now, we are starting to see this trend towards mm -hmm. the gig economy in the photo, photo industry. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So the other thing that's affecting the uh, professional retirement is, is consolidation. Uh, you know, I think there's no real secret that, you know, the capture side of the industry has, has exploded. You know, there's, you know, who, whoever tries to figure out how many images are captured a year, it's what, a trillion or two trillion or yep. what have you. And obviously the numbers of professional photographers has increased because everybody who has a camera thinks they're a professional, which, you know, for the sake of this discussion, we'll all agree is not the case. <laughs> not everyone is a professional. Um, so what happens in mature markets when there's overcapacity that drives consolidation? And what, so what you see is, and I'm speaking specifically about the output side of the business is you see things like, um, you know, as we mentioned, Life Touch consolidated with Shutterfly. And that was primarily not necessarily because of professional photography, but because of, of the, the, the printing capacity of Life Touch and the printing capacity of Shutterfly combined made for a compelling business. And, you know, we're seeing that with other players uh, in that space. Uh, RPI and Color Centric, who has, you know, some professional customers have, have also combined recently. And that's just something to keep in mind as you know, you're looking for partners or you're looking for output uh, opportunities that there's, you know, you may have to be, you may have to keep your eyes open for other opportunities if your partner changes or if there's a buyout or something like that, because there's a lot of money out there as we're gonna talk about in the next slide. And those investors are looking for opportunities and those investors will, you know, make consolidation happen. So there's a lot of overcapacity in the printing market and the output market. And so that's going to drive consolidation, but it also nice, nice transition there. Thank you. Uh, TW, uh, that investment is a great opportunity for this industry because you're seeing venture capital firms, you're seeing, uh, private equity now investing into this market because they see there's an opportunity. Uh, it, you know, it's not super sexy from a fintech standpoint or from a, uh, you know, standpoint of high technology or whatnot, because right. a lot of the technology has been proven. The business models may not have been, but there's no one who's going to come out with a device that's going to completely upend the market. That's not, that's probably not going to happen. So this is a very attractive market for investment because you have a, a product or service that isn't high demand. You know, let's not forget there is a demand for photography, how it's being fulfilled, how it's, you know, how, what the business model is, is up for grabs, 
but people want photography. They want professional services, whether it's a, an event photo, whether it's a sports event photo, whether it's pictures at a wedding, whether it's something, you know, people are now encountering professional photography much more than they ever used to. Uh, you know, not 10, 15 years ago, the only time you would ever encounter a professional photographer as an adult would be if you attended a wedding or if your kid had a school picture take, right. taken. <clears throat> Nowadays, you know, there's digital business portraits. A lot of people have their business portrait taken every year, every two years. Um, you know, uh, back in the day, I remember that was one of the funny things about, uh, you would go visit Eastman Kodak and they would have these badges with their professional portrait on it, you know, so they could go to different parts of the building. And they always had like a portrait that was like 10 or 15 years old. That was like the joke was how long can I keep my portrait? Nowadays, people, you know, experience professional photography much, much more. So what investors are looking for in a lot of cases are customer touch points. How often can a portrait business or photography business or someone they're interested in investing in interact with a customer? Is it a one-off or is it a ongoing stream of potential revenue. And there's all kinds of opportunities for that. Uh, so that's something that is, I think is a good thing. Some people are fearful of, of uh, equity investments and you know how that changes things. Cause certainly there is, you know, uh, we're seeing it right now with uh, Life Touch and uh, Shutterfly where a lot of the Life Touch management has changed. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, cause for concern for some people. Uh, but with change comes disruption, with disruption comes opportunity. So I agree. Yeah. And we're, we're seeing that with software as well, where uh, private investment comes in and buys, say, image quicks and, and photo links, right? Which are exactly. it directly affects the uh, volume photography industry, this crowd that we're talking to today. And I, I certainly see uh, consolidation happening, as mm -hmm. you mentioned, on the production side. Uh, we're also seeing a lot of automation happening, right? And mm -hmm. Um, I would argue that <laughs> you had mentioned that there might not be disruptive hardware. I would argue that that smartphone in, in mom's pocket mm -hmm. is the biggest disrupt, uh, disruptor that this industry has seen, uh, much more so than digital cameras, right? It, it's, yeah. it, and and <clears throat> again, hence this whole users conference, hence, uh, you know, Capture Life coming into the forefront of digital delivery. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we're having this conversation today, I think, is in large part due to how do we get mobile? How do we get to where mom is? And how do we get to where these trends are going, right? Right. So, and so it kind of dovetail on that. I wasn't arguing about, you know, yes, smartphones are a huge impact. My, my, my contention was, you know, they're 10 years old. So, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. Yeah, understood. So the, the, the buy-in there, in fact, that's one of the big challenges the smartphone makers has is they've reached saturation to some extent. And what's interesting is the big distinguishing factor between the Google Pixel, the iPhone, the Samsung Galaxy, and some of those isn't the call quality. <laughs> Nobody calls anymore. <laughs> it, it's the camera. Yeah. That's that's what they're promoting, basically. I mean, all these companies are basically camera companies that happen to have a uh, SIM chip in them. So, and, and Gary, the gear up, I, I feel, is as we move towards faster and faster mobile networks, you're going to see mm -hmm. the hardware on the phones is now capable of doing whatever. I mean, there's... There, as many processors and as much RAM on phones as there are on laptop computers. Sure. And so I, I think we're, we're kind of waiting around for how can we make these things connect faster and make this data pass back and forth faster. Mm -hmm. I think that's the next, what's going to drive the next trend is going to be our ability to connect and, and consume faster over these networks. And photography is a big part of that. Sure. Cause I mean, I mean, here's, here's a good scenario, right? I mean, with, with 5g coming, you know, um, myself being in Michigan, I hear a lot about the impact of 5G on the auto industry because that's really what's going to drive self-driving cars is you're going to be able to have constant real-time updates of traffic and situations. So a lot of that the brain power of a smart car is going to be yeah. loaded into the cloud. So to that extent, let's say you're, let's say you're a school photographer or no, a sports and event photographer, you've shot juniors, uh, football game what's to stop those pictures from that event when mom gets in her car to leave they're on the dash of the car and either on that big screen like a tesla has and mom can share them right there it's like boom it's on their car maybe that's the you know i don't know if cars are gonna have wallpaper on their screens probably 
But, you know, so that's that, and, and that immediately, that, you know, there's going to be no such thing as lag time when 5G comes right. in. Exactly. You know, you, know, you, I mean, you know, you're going to talk to your grandkids. I remember when there was lag time. You had to yeah. wait 10 seconds for something to show up. Yeah. So, go ahead. Which I think it speaks to another of the trends. Sure. Immediacy, right? (laughs) I don't know how long we can move forward with this next generation of consumers Mm -hmm. where everything is immediate, right? Right. Even delivery of uh, Amazon to my door, right? I mean, I can go on Amazon right now here in Minneapolis and there's a giant warehouse in one of the suburbs. They can guarantee it to me by this afternoon, right? Groceries are the same way. Um, I don't know how long we can get away with saying it's going to take three weeks, right? Right. Yeah, that's, that's, and, and, and remember, one, one thing, one thing to keep in mind is um, Amazon is setting the standard yeah. for the shopping experience, right? People, people are being trained by Amazon that this is how you do e-commerce. So if you're not follow, following that model, if you're not as quick and easy as Amazon, people are going to go somewhere else. That's just, that's just the reality. I, so, I so moving on to our last um, item, if we can, because no, we've got to go back. There we Sorry. go. <laughs> Operator error. Operator error. <laughs> so uh, the, the last piece, which is very important, it kind of dovetails on what you're saying about, um, you know, kind of what's coming. Um, there's a lot of information that's within a picture that can create other opportunities. And, and that includes, uh, artificial intelligence, digital storytelling, other other things. We're starting to see that in some of the vendors who show up at things like SPAC and things like that, where you know you can create a digital yearbook automatically with the uh, content of a picture, right? You can group pictures of the same child together and things like that. But I think it's even going to go farther, where it's going to get into scene recognition, where you know professional photographers going to shoot photos of a wedding and He'll upload it to his gallery service, and the gallery service will say, this kind of looks like a wedding. There's this main figure who's in white, and so we're going to create an automatic product, whether it's an online gallery, whether it's a photo book, and it'll be all themed on a wedding, and the photographer won't have to do much. Yep. No. Yeah, full full on automation of these processes, right? Right, and it'll be really good. It'll be as good as what a human being can do. I think it's it's really interesting to think about the the content of a picture itself, and I think any of us that have done any poking around has seen what what Google's capable of doing, just reading yeah. pixels in an image, right, and going, I know what this is. It's they've been doing it for years now. Yeah, I mean, right now we're in a world where facial recognition is basically very rudimentary, right? In terms of you know, every everything's right. done, yeah, right. It knows where a face is, but then you get into the next level, which is quality identification who's in the picture are they happy are they sad right and you know so all of those factors coming in are going to enable storytelling to an extent that is beyond what we can offer now yeah and certainly beyond what we can offer just because of the sheer labor that's involved and exactly and the cost somebody's the, the price somebody's willing to pay for that type of product you turn this into an automated system Mm-hmm. And and I, these products are going to start selling. I, that definitely, in my mind, is what this next iteration of professional photography and selling in the professional photography market is going to look like. Yep, definitely. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, you, I mean, you see it happening now with, um, you know, uh, music streaming. You know, yep. they they will not only pair artists by what you you know what you've liked in the past, but they'll kind of gauge in you know what kind of mood are you in. Those. And use their algorithm to hear you that yeah. way. Do you feel like bouncing enough. around the house? Do you, do you need to study? And, you know, pretty soon they're going to start saying, okay, you listen to this kind of music this time of day in this location. This is what I'm going to present to you. Yeah. It'll be like, so photography is going to be the same way. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Very good insight. And Gary, that's what I've got. That's what you've got. As always, uh, I appreciate it. I, I think our listeners, are, uh, again, our viewers today, are certainly going to appreciate your take. Uh, you've been in the industry a long enough time. You've seen these trends come and go. You've seen companies, uh, you know, giant companies fall apart and, and small companies <laughs> turn into big companies. It's, uh, 
again, it, you mentioned it earlier, you can either take this um, and it can be a, a fearful moment, right? This can be scary, or you right. can embrace it and go, this is a wonderful time of change and, and automation. And as you mentioned, storytelling as photog professional photographers, we're all storytellers. We're, we're trying to tell a story of a moment in time uh, mm -hmm. or a, a series of images that are describing a moment of time, such as mm -hmm. wedding, whatever it might be. And really, I think we're on the cusp of taking this to the next level of, the, of that whole storytelling process. Exactly. I, I, anyway, thanks again. It. Yeah, thanks, Gary. Thanks for your time. Appreciate you coming on. And we're going to head to the next segment. All right. Thank you much. Take care. All right. Bye. Thank you, Gary. We appreciate having you on. You have a tremendous perspective of this industry. Uh, and I think you and I both agree it is a time of tremendous opportunity. Before I hand this off to Jeff Eckerly, one of the co-founders of Capture Life, and Derek Tyler from uh, GPA, I just want to make a brief statement, take it or leave it. Um, but this is my opinion. No one photographer or lab or software company is going to solve the issues that we face in the professional photo industry right now. The consumer is changing rapidly, and I have a hard time believing that any one of us by ourselves is going to figure out where the consumer is going and how we're going to keep pace. The beauty of modern software companies uh, is really a concept called the open API. I'm not going to bore you with uh, geek speak. I can go in that direction as well. Uh, but really, Capture Life being an open API, what it means is that other software companies like Photolinks Flow and Rose and Kodak DP2 can plug right in. I mean, we're working with uh, 18 Pro Labs uh, around the world. Uh, we've got large independent photographers. Uh, we've got um, automation companies coming on board with uh, automated camera triggering. We've got resorts companies. You name it. Uh, what's the, the driving force behind all of this is Capture Life's open API architecture, meaning whatever the workflow is, if you developed it yourself or if you, you're a large lab that's been operating for years and years, uh, we've got ways just to plug this in so photographers can deliver that uh, incredible consumer experience. Just really, it doesn't take long these days to connect, uh, ramp up, and get everybody on board. So that said, I'm now going to hand off to Jeff Eckerly and Derek Tyler. Uh, Jeff, take it away. To further the point of integration with industry leaders, I want to introduce Derek Tyler, General Manager at GPA a leading professional print lab focused on youth sports photographers. Derek, welcome. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Now, GPA was the first print lab to integrate with Capture Life back in 2016, and the photographers there have been delivering digital images through Capture Life the last few years. So, Derek, the, the key question I want to kick off with is, why is a professional wholesale sports print lab like GPA embracing digital offerings? Well, the first part of that answer, Jeff, is a business philosophy. So for 24 years since I've been at the company, we've been on the leading edge of technology. Uh, we're not afraid to try new things. And digital delivery wasn't a new thing for us. Uh, we've been doing it in CDs and websites, and web downloads. Um, but the digital delivery through the smart devices was new for us. So when Capture Life came along, it was just a natural progression of things in our philosophy. Got it. Got it. Well, I know I appreciate when we go back and think about two, three years ago, four years ago when we first met, how you did embrace that and have that innovative spirit. And it's fantastic to see in this industry. Um, but, you know, just doing it's one thing. What what are some specific benefits now that you've been doing it for a few years working with Capture Life that you've seen for your GPA photographers? Well, the, the benefits are we're, we're staying involved with our studios and we're keeping them involved with their clients as a wholesale lab. Some wholesale labs kind of lose touch of what's going on in the retail environment, and GPA is not like that. We've always been in close contact with our studios clients. Uh, we listen to them. Uh, we listen to their consumers, the customers, the parents. And so we really just want to give them what they want. I mean, sales and marketing is that easy. You give the people what they want, and you go from there. Uh, is it dangerous? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what we do is we step back, and we think of what we're trying to accomplish. And what we're trying to accomplish is an evolution of 
the youth sports photography market. So we're taking prints and selling prints and putting them in packages. And then we're looking at digital and realizing that what parents want is something more than just a print. And so we create a balance of that. And that balance is bundling print and digital. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. And, you know, that's really what everybody's going to hear later on, you know, from other speakers and other sessions today is how bundling print and digital can open up so many more opportunities with the digital capabilities that Capture Life brings to the table. Um, so as you start thinking about unlocking the future and the potential of GPA and Capture Life digital images delivered and, and so forth, the relationship we've formed, uh, what are some things you can share about where you'll be going next? Well, where we're going next, um, before I go into where we're going next, let me back up to what Capture Life brings to the table. And for us, it brings a complete system where we can get into digital delivery through smart devices and then take that system and translate it to our studio clients and make it easy for them. So, so Capture Life's really made it easy for us to get into this marketplace. So when we started this four years ago, part of that being important on, on the front end of that is to get some experience and get some test marketing done and use those three, four years to get us where we are today. And where we are today is understanding what parents want and how we can combine print and digital and how we can combine those things where parents are seeing them in the marketplace to purchase them. So what we've done is test market over the years. And this past year, we tried something new uh, with our largest volume client. And what they did is they put the digital delivery, the Capture Life digital delivery, in all of their packages except for the most least expensive. So what that did is created a threshold for parents so they could say, oh, for X amount of dollars, I can get a print package plus a digital delivery, and I'm happy doing that. And what we saw when we looked at those results this year is the studio photographer was able to increase their sales average 40 cents a kid. So when you multiply that 40 cents a kid by, say, 40,000 individuals that you photograph throughout the year, that's $16,000 of basically free money that uh, was in their pocket. All they had to do was offer the digital delivery of the Capture Life product, what we call it, in with the prints and those packages, and the money just took care of itself. Uh, that's fantastic. Fantastic, Derek. We love stories like those, of course. Well, Derek, thanks a lot for your insights today. And of course, thank you for the, the all the years, uh, the relationship with Capture Life. We really enjoy working with GPA and your photographers. Jeff, I appreciate uh, everything that you and your team does. And I look forward to the continued partnership uh, moving forward and uh, realizing the short-term and long-term marketing goals. So thanks for your time. All right. Well, while it's time for me to wrap up for now, I strongly encourage you to keep listening to the following sessions. What we've covered in this session has really just been our message that we've been giving since we started. Stay tuned for the upcoming sessions focused on unlocking new technology and new revenue, but only if you deliver digital images. TW, back to you. All right, thank you, Jeff, and thank you, Derek. We really appreciate your perspective coming from the lab again, Capture Life is this open platform. And again, this is an example of how we've got uh, different companies all in the same industry trying to uh, solve some of the issues that we face collectively. I'm gonna hand it over to Scott Tefusco now. Scott's the other co-founder of Capture Life, and he's going to introduce Ryan Sapatka from Focused On Forever. Scott, take it away. Hi folks, this is Scott DeFusco with Capture Life. And for this segment, we want to focus on consumer trends that are driving our industry. And we get this information from a variety of sources, the hundreds of thousands of parents that um, use the Capture Life platform to consume the information that you as photographers and labs deliver. Um, we get this feedback from you all and what you hear from customers, but also just general industry insights. And really it's no surprise of what these trends are and how they're being driven. You know, consumer behavior has changed dramatically, especially in the last five to 10 years. And the players on the left have been a big part of that. 
if you look at Amazon this holiday season, it's just amazing. We're down to one day shipping now. Um, and the amount of consumption of online shopping and uh, delivery of goods is exploding. Or you look to the streaming wars with Netflix. We now have new players in the market with Disney Plus and Apple entering it. So there's an arms race there. But let's look at it in the context of the photography industry and what we're hearing. And these are not all the trends, but these are some of the critical ones that are driving um, you know, the consumer and driving us as businesses to adapt. One is the consumers clearly saying they want choice. They want to make sure that they have, um, you know, products that are available at their discretion. They want it, the whole experience from the shopping to the delivery to the support to be convenient and simple. Um, that's pretty obvious. They also want quality of product is, is as important as it's ever been, but they also want quantity. I mean, look at the streaming services and how they have to keep up with the insatiable appetite of consumers just wanting more. And they want it now. I mean, this one-day delivery from Amazon is a great example. They're setting the tone and the expectations for consumers that we now um, have to uh, meet that goal. And they want it mobile. And they want it digital. They also want print. So no one's saying they don't want print. They want both. So with us today is Ryan, um, owner of focused on forever, Ryan Zabaka. Um, his company, when I, when I heard him speak recently, I thought they have adapted their business to these trends and are thriving. So I wanted to hand it over to Ryan um, to really provide some more context here from his business's perspective. Thanks, Ryan. All right. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for having me today. My name is Ryan. I'm from Focus on Forever Studio, and we are uh, here in South Florida. And the uh, only quiet place I could find today in the studio, we're all set up for all of our Christmas sessions we've doing, been doing over the last uh, two weeks or so. So uh, super busy at the office, as I imagine most of you guys are back home as well. So um, I wanted to share five different points of things that we're incorporating within our studio that Scott had mentioned in terms of really having um, a really boost and a successful fall that we've had this year and that's been trending for us the last several years. We now have about 55 schools. We, we grow slow here at the studio. We try not to add too many schools per year. Five to eight schools per year has been our growth average and um, that's a happy growth um, speed for us. One of the things that makes us a little bit different than I would say most school photographers out there is the fact that we give our parents lots of choices. We're not a prepay studio. We are a proofing scenario studio. So everyone uh, gets photographed at the schools in fall and spring for their individuals. And we give the uh, parents the ability to choose their poses online uh, when they place their order. We do still send home some envelopes, but 85% of our ordering is online and we give the parents multiple poses to choose from. So we've kind of gone away from that uh, stereotypical one yearbook mugshot type of scenario. We've never done that at our studio. We're about seven years into school photography and we've always offered our parents those options and their cho and those choices. And that's always added up for us um, to be successful, to sell more packages, more poses. Our average tends to be around 1.4 to 1.6 poses per order. So the parents are ordering multiple poses. We don't let them pick their yearbook image or anything like that. The standard um, number one pose for yearbook is automatically um, entered into yearbook for fall. That would be kind of messy otherwise, but a majority of our orders are incorporating our additional designer poses that we do. So choice is a big factor for us and our parents to be able to choose um, the best smiles, the best inner um, expressions that we're getting from each child. Um, and a lot of times, you know, if they go through a retake session, uh, they are sometimes ordering from the retake from one child and from the main session from the first child to make sure they're getting the best options for all of their poses and prints. One thing that also Scott mentioned was convenience. Uh, for us, we've been very technological heavy in terms of making sure our parents have the ability to proof online, to order online, to be previewing their images and their proofs uh, via their phones and their digital tablets and devices. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, about 85% of our parents now order online. That's mainly because about 
90% of our schools, we only offer that option. We've kind of converted them all. They're used to how our proofing works, where they'll go online, they'll view the multiple images, and it's so much cleaner when they place that online order because they get a digital receipt. If there's an error, they notice it right away when they get the email confirmation. Um, and it makes things just so much cleaner on the back end when our customer support staff is uh, pulling up an order number or anything like that. Uh, it's very easy for us and for our clients and our parents. Um, it all kind of starts when they get the text message from us uh, notifying them that picture day is tomorrow, what to wear, here's what the backgrounds are going to be, uh, et cetera. We kind of give them tips and kind of get them excited about portrait day. That's kind of step one that comes via text. So again, starting with, um, you know, uh, very convenient for the parents to be getting that uh, right on their phones. Uh, then after the photo day, we do still print our proofs uh, mainly on eight and a half by 11 flyers that have the proofs printed on them. Some of them, like I said, still get envelopes, but that's a slim number now. Um, but then they all go online to view. So it's very um, convenient for them to go online, view all the poses, pick their favorite poses, um, place their order, um, and everything's kind of digitally done onto their credit card. It's so much cleaner that way. And then when we go to deliver the, um, the prints, um, that's obviously sent either to their home or to the school. And then for our digital delivery with Capture Life, that also um, turns into being very convenient for them. They get the text, they're used to the app, they um, open the app and the pictures are just right there. It's super simple and simple, uh, super easy for the parents really to not have anything go wrong. It's, it's kind of foolproof when it comes to that digital delivery through Capture Life. Um, and then each season, they just keep adding um, to their galleries on Capture Life. So it's all in one place. We've had people get new phones, they don't re-download the app or we re-notify them. They install the app and all their images are there and they're happy campers. So that convenience factor has been um, a major plus for all of our parents moving on from season to season and how they just get used to um, that, uh, that convenience factor. Um, in terms of going back to what I said about poses, kind of leads us to our, um, our third topic, which is quantity and quality. We're providing our parents each season with different images. It's not a headshot with a different background, and that works in some cases, but for us, we kind of take it to the next level. We want to make sure that our parents are getting unique sets. Uh, my wife is one of our lead artists. She's um, her and I, the owners of the studio, and she really works on a majority of the set designs and the background choices before um, the season starts. That happens months before because we have to plan that um, to go on to our announcements. We have to order multiple backgrounds or props or whatever we're doing for, say, that spring, um, typically three or four months ahead of time. So our um, gear, uh, our gear logistics supervisor can get all of our equipment for our multiple teams ready to go for season. So um, that all kind of happens in the background. We work hard because with our proofing method, it we really got to knock it out of the park. So we got to make sure that these backgrounds are um, and our setups are appealing, they're different, they're cutting edge, and really giving our parents a multiple different choices to say, hey, I bought fall, do I need to bring, do I need to buy in spring? And then they see the images and they're like, wow, this is much different. This is really cool, we need to buy these too. So it's not just a one season kind of thing or a once a year type of decision. Uh, we're constantly picking ideas up, saving them in our idea folders throughout um, every year so that when we're sitting down with our whole team, that we can kind of determine what's going to be best. Um, we take the level of quality in terms of our, our lighting and um, the staff that we hire for our photographers to make sure they're getting top-notch photography because uh, that all adds up to more sales when you're selling and then when you're um, even post-selling after you deliver the digitals, uh, that adds to higher reselling um, through the Capture Life app and through even reorders after the case. So uh, I guess the point is, Great images, great you know background sets, and a lot of thought can add up to um, big numbers when you're doing a lot of school and a lot of volume. Um, one thing that we also have worked with quite a bit this season and kind of put a lot of thought into is our speed of delivery. Um, I guess we call it the Amazon effect. I've been an Amazon Prime member for years, and now it's like one day they're like stupid fast, and the mentality of uh, parents and just buyers in general is it shouldn't take that long. So we've um, just this season sped up our delivery, our processing, our proofing times by several days. And we know that it's even not quick enough. And so we have plans kind of 
rolling into action for the spring and for next fall to even speed up our, our proofing, our digital delivery, um, in terms of us processing our orders faster and getting everything out uh, print and digital even faster as it kind of moves from season to season. So I, I would definitely challenge all of our photographers and there's definitely a lot of studios I've talked to, they, they blow my mind if that's, uh, in terms of how fast they're, they're getting things out. For us, we go through a couple extra steps in terms of our editing and quality control before it gets released with our proofing. Um, but there's a lot of photographers really doing a great job at that. And that's one job that our studio is definitely paying attention to is making sure we're getting through things as fast as possible. And the digital delivery helps with that because if they want it fast, you know, I can't get them a print in five seconds, but we can get them um, an immediately processed capture life order if they, um, if they need it now uh, really quick. So that's definitely a benefit of digital delivery. Um, with that said, um, prints are obviously extremely important revenue generator of every portrait studio. That's kind of always been our, you know, our main product that we've sold is print, print packages along those lines. And what we realized is that by combining um, what now is a much more in-demand digital product with print products, it's been really, um, really successful for us in terms of uh, adding the digital to print orders or vice versa. So we have several preset collections that we have. So when a parent goes online to buy, uh, one of our most popular packages is our package A. It's right out in front as the first package. Um, it is the most expensive package because they get print rights and they get the shared, you know, digital files to do as they um, wish with. And um, for most of our schools, that ranges between $75 and $95, just depending on the price levels that they are in, in different districts. And that gives them access to all four or five poses that we photograph. So it's a popular package. And uh, we have repeat parents that buy that every single season. Uh, our goal is to photograph at least three great images that they can't part with. And then it just makes financial sense in terms of how we create our packages to go ahead and go with that digital buy all package. We also have a print all package because we had parents wanting prints of all the poses. So we've created a print all package. That's our package B. And then we had parents say, well, I kind of want the digital and the prints. And so now we have, um, and we have had for several seasons, um, a print and digital buy all ranging from 100 to $145, depending on the school. And they get a set of prints and they get the digitals because you never know what they want now and what they'll need later. And I think a lot of parents are not thinking about that. They really want the prints now, but then in 10 years, I'm gonna kind of want those digital files too. And then we have parents that kind of think backwards on that and they want the digitals now and maybe a little bit prints later. So those packages are popular. Um, and then what's worked really well for us is uh, doing the digital add-on. So every print package now, whether they're buying um, two five by sevens and four wallets, you know, or a package that's got an eight by 10 and two five by sevens, um, we give them the option online to add the digital file for a discounted price. So in many scenarios, instead of $35 for the digital file that we sell at, they can add it for only $20 to their print package. And um, the numbers on that have been really well, really good for us in terms of uh, parents adding that digital to their print package. So um, they have to make that choice. It's not something they can just ignore. It pops up and ask them if they want prints only or if they wanna ask, uh, add the digital for 20 bucks. Uh, when we added that feature, that was um, an idea from another fellow photographer that we network with, and uh, it's worked really well. And I want to say probably about 15 to 20 percent of the parents add that digital on, um, which with the amount of orders that we do is um, a good amount of extra digital orders that we now sell with that add-on. So um, now that the parents know that they can do it, it's kind of an easy choice each season to get the print and the digital together. And I would challenge a lot of photographers as they start going through your package um, scenarios for your next seasons to really um, strategically think of how that digital needs to be placed in your packages. Uh, certainly don't give it away um, at, a, at a low value, you know, charge for that digital. Um, that's something that we believe in. Other um, photographers might add it on to certain packages to get their uh, minimum order up a little bit, in which case maybe they're not really giving it away um, or adding it for free. They're kind of charging for it subliminally in terms of a higher package price. Um, but however you do it, kind of think of the strategy of making sure you value those digital files 
um, and use them as a, a revenue generator for your studio because moving forward, it's only going to get heavier and heavier in terms of digital. So having a good financial um, plan in terms of your packages and still making sure you're generating the revenue per event that you need and per sale um, that'll all add up to a larger average sales for you as it has for us. And um, we hope that you kind of make sure that you think about that a lot when you're creating all your new packages from season to season. But thanks um, to Scott and the team for having me today. Um, hope you guys picked up a few things from how we do things here at Focused On Forever um, here in South Florida. And um, thanks again for having us and we wish everyone uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas to all of you and your families. Thank you, Ryan. We appreciate having you on board. I'm going to hand this back to Scott to talk about the new Capture Life Marketplace and then on to Robert St. Marie from 36 Picks. Robert's segment is an excellent example of how Capture Life's open API invites all companies into the Capture Life ecosystem to create this collective offering of the best digital content that can be sold directly to customers or used to create awesome customized photo products in the print store. And again, provides customers this modern mobile experience where these products are shipped right to their door. Scott, handing it back to you. Hi folks, uh, Scott Fusco here with Capture Life. And in this segment of the Pulse conference here, I wanted to focus on the Capture Life marketplace, but really the focus is on how to use the marketplace to drive additional sales from your customers after you've delivered um, their, their original content that they purchased. So really great opportunity to drive a whole new incremental line of, of revenue. And here's what we're going to be um, discussing in this segment. One is I'm going to give you just a very quick overview here of the Capture Life Marketplace. You may have read about it in some of our um, campaigns that we've put out uh, describing it, but um, there's a lot to it, and I just want to give you a real quick summary of what it is. Second and most exciting is Robert St. Marie from 36 Picks, who is a partner with us in the Marketplace, is going to be providing an overview of the products they're bringing to market with us. So really excited to see that. And then I'm gonna do a demo of that so you can see what it is live, how it works and what the consumer experience is. So I'm gonna jump right in and really talk about, this is the sort of the old way of engaging with the customer and really not engaging with them at all except around that initial purchase. So um, the old model is around um, selling a package to them that is prints only and maybe a digital download or a CD or thumb drive or an email of their digital file if you happen to be selling that as part of their initial order. Well, the problem with that is it's a dead-end transaction. They download the image through a digital download. You have no ongoing connection with that consumer. You see the relationship to the school, and it's virtually impossible to drive additional sales, whether it be print products or whether it be digital products. So... The Capture Life model changes all that. And this is not to be a sales pitch specifically on Capture Life, but to really set up the opportunity of what the marketplace is. So when you bundle uh, digital with your print sales up front, you deliver the digital with Capture Life. And so you're landing on that consumer's phone with um, the app experience. You're connected. You stay on their phone. If you look at the the stats down below on the right, 90% of all the Capture Life consumers are using it on mobile. They have the choice to use it on web or mobile and they choose mobile. So we know that's the trend. And we're still on 70% of the phones that we've ever landed on, which means you're staying connected to those customers. Your content, your brand, additional sales are only a tap away um, from that customer. And 25% of those people who use the app are inviting one or more people into the whole Capture Life experience. So now friends and relatives are seeing your brand and they have the opportunity to buy more. And that correlates directly with our in-app purchases, real, with a quarter of the purchases that happen in our apps are happening from someone other than the original customer, grandma, grandpa, brothers, sisters, other friends and family members. And the other key thing to remember is this content builds over time in a timeline of their school and youth sports portrait memories. So that's always more opportunity as this timeline grows to purchase um, more and more over time. So the power of Capture Life is, you know, we have the ability to engage them with marketing, to try to drive behavior, drive them into the store, 
through social sharing like we just discussed to bring more buyers in. We've always had a very strong print store to drive um, sales of additional print products by just having the, um, the print store tap away with these personalized products that get delivered to home. But what the Capture Life Marketplace represents is the ability now for us to um, sell additional digital products after we land on that phone with that initial order. To turn that one capture, two poses, whatever it is that you shoot, into additional digital products that you can sell at the price that you want to sell them for right in our app. So an incredible opportunity. And what the marketplace represents is two categories of products. Think of this as the app store for digital photography. So not only are we introducing um, products ourselves into the marketplace, for example, the ability to purchase um, different backgrounds if you happen to shoot green screen, or image transformations with overlays and other uh, really slick transformations to images. And TW will be showing some of that a little later. But what's really exciting is we're opening up the marketplace to third parties like 36 Picks and Vimeo are our first two partners. And that's what we're here to show you today um, with Robert St. Marie is our integration with 36 Picks. So we are very excited that our first Capture Life Marketplace partner is 36 Picks. Many of you work with 36 Picks today and rely on their incredible technology and services for your business. And here to introduce our partnership and the exciting products we're bringing to market is Robert St. Marie. He's the president and CEO of 36 Picks. And after Robert's overview, I'll provide a quick demo of how this all works. So Robert, um, thanks for being here and welcome to Pulse. Thanks, Scott. Uh, this is Robert from 36 Picks. Uh, today, I'll take a few minutes to discuss how using uh, good backgrounds or good content can increase your sales. And I'll also touch on how we uh, use e-delivery to also increase our sales. So um, maybe before I, I get into that, maybe a quick word about 36 Picks. Uh, we do a uh, green screen and blue screen for the school and sports uh, industry. Uh, we do about 15 million images a year. Um, what you might not know is that we're also a um, school photography studio in Montreal, Canada. And we do approximately 350,000 kids. And the data that I'll share with you today is based on firsthand experience. So, um, so where I start today is we start with our great extraction. Uh, so we have the extraction, we spend the money, we went into the school or at a sports event, we took some pictures. So that those are the assets now that we have in our hands. So how do we maximize the sales with, with those assets? Um, obviously, uh, more content um, is equal in, in, in all cases, more sales, but it's gotta be the right content. Uh, having the right content, uh, something that's compelling, will uh, not only help you uh, sell picture packages or more picture packages. Um, also, um, what we found is that when you have really cool content, uh, that usually also brings up your sales for uh, associated photo products like mugs and magnets and, and bookmarks and, and so on. Um, one, a, a little note on uh, mugs. Mugs is a, it's kind of an inter interesting product because everybody hates to produce them and ship them. They're heavy and it's always been, uh, it's always been a great product for us. Uh, this year, again, we'll sell way over 10,000 mugs. Uh, mugs work really well with cause related, uh, imagery as, as other cool imagery. Um, so, so now we have those uh, great images of, of, of the kids that we took into the school. Uh, we want to sell more picture packages, but what's 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 kind of um, what's been working really really well for us is that having having access to good backgrounds, good content, uh, usually pushes the customer to buy more than than one package, or buy what we call a custom package where they can mix mix and match uh, image size and, and backgrounds and, and and so on. So. For us, having good content not only pushes the sale of the, of the original picture package, but also potentially multiple packages, custom package or split package where you can choose more than one background. Um, now let me get into um, why background selection matters. Um, and to illustrate that, I'm gonna show you a stat 
um, that uh, I came upon last year. And like any data, when you see data, you, there's always a surprise in it. And this was really surprising to me. Um, and this is really a typical example. Uh, it's not unique. Uh, most of them have similar uh, statistics. Out of a school of 350 uh, students, uh, 165 different backgrounds were selected. Uh, I'll grant you that uh, a lot of them are onesies, but it it goes it goes to, to show that uh, parents love backgrounds. Parents love digging into backgrounds just to, to actually select for all these backgrounds to be selected. That means that there was a uh, pretty deep dive into a background selection, background catalog. But that that goes to show that parents do care about background and uh, and how their kids look on them. Now let me talk about. Um, the importance of background stats. Um, this is one thing that I that I've realized in our industry over the last few years is that background is often a second thought, something that's more um, uh, uh, sure to find the right background, offer the right background. A lot of our customer agreements mean customer ask us about backgrounds. And as an example, um, you know, if you want to run a successful restaurant. Um, you have to know what you're selling and you have to know what's selling on your menu because what's not selling on your menu, uh, you should take it off and replace it with something that's selling. And I found that this was a really good analogy to our industry because I find that a lot of us um, are not exactly sure what sells or what doesn't sell on a real time basis. So how many of you out there actually know what your top five backgrounds are? Maybe some of you do, some of you don't. But I would, I, I would dare to say that probably most of you are sure of what's actually selling or not selling, or it's something you do just at the end of the season when the sales are long gone, long, long behind you, and you've lost that three months of potentially uh, increasing your sales. So here's, here's uh, some of our top backgrounds. What I did here, I kind of took the top five backgrounds per categories of background. Um, so I have a starting top left, we have what we call the studio life at studio line. Then we have school life and traditional, the blue. Then we have textures, which here is a paint brick wall. And little word, word on brick wall. Brick walls somehow always sell very well. Um, but we like having some 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 new textures, some 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 fresh stuff to show um, every year, every season, and switch it up. Um, also, where it kind of where one thing that we've been pushing pretty hard over the last few years is we've been uh, we're associated now with uh, four four nonprofit organizations. We have our three professional sports team in Montreal. We have the Montreal Canadian hockey team. We have our football team, the Alouettes, and we have the MLS soccer team, the Impact. And we support their nonprofit organization. And where this is where this gets really fun is that um, it allows you to go a bit deeper in just a simple background. Allows you to put messaging. You can do templating uh, and really customize this product with cool imagery. And these are things I was talking about months before. These are things that work really well with uh, with photo products. Um, so that's been our our experience um, working with nonprofit. And by the way, um, at SPAC, I have a presentation on the Friday morning. And I'll be giving a lot more data about, about all of this um, if you're interested. So let me talk a little bit about e-delivery. Um, I try to condense everything we do in two lines here, but it's kind of important. Um, one of the things that we started doing now, I believe is our second or third year, uh, I think it's our second full year uh, on, the, on our text SMS product, which is basically like an e-wallet type uh, product where Parents, after they bought a package, uh, can actually uh, spend an extra, I think it's $4, 2 or $4, to get that image sent to their phone. Um, so again, just to be clear, um, you have to buy a package first because we didn't want to cannibalize our, 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 our first sale. So that's only accessible once you've bought a package. But even if you keep out bought a package, 8% of them will actually get that extra image, which is basically an 8% of sale that you would have uh, never seen before, um, and eight percent is on volume. Um, another surprising element is that eight percent of all all sales um, actually uh, the, the parents will uh, pick one of our causes, and our causes usually contribute two dollars to the organization, nonprofit organization. 
And where this gets really interesting is that uh, we have statistics that I'll share at SPAC that um, when people, typically people that, that contribute to causes actually buy bigger packages or more elaborate packages, because sometimes they want the package related to the cause, but they'll want one of the traditional also backgrounds. Um, so, so our, not only, um, we're selling, we're contributing to all these great causes, but we're also generating more sales. So everybody, when we're making the world a better place and we're, um, and we're making our businesses, uh, better at the same time. Um, a little, um, one thing that we will be, um, pushing out in 2020 is our, uh, is our video product line, um, and, and this is really cool. It's something I've always wanted to do. I w always wanted to find a way to bring video into our industry without having to create more assets, having to do video on site or having to take different pictures. Um, so where this, this whole thing started um, in support again, one of the causes we wanted to have a video product, we wanted to have the imagery and the message. So we, 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 we went on to a journey of, of creating this two minute video uh, to talk about Antarctica and the importance of protecting our ocean. So this is an ocean unite cause, which is one of our uh, one of our causes. Um, and we, uh, as you'll see in in, in a few seconds, we um, we decided to use an avatar to customize the video with uh, with the face of the child. Um, a little note on that. I'll talk a little bit more about that at SPAC. Uh, we're planning to release a series of these uh, shorter, it's going to be shorter videos, probably in 10 to 20 seconds, because we find that this will be the perfect product to be delivered electronically next year and to be shared on uh, social media. Um, so let me, uh, if you can bear with me for two minutes uh, and watch the video, um, and then I'll come on back to you. Can I ask you to join and take a breath with me? Inhale nice and deep. There's something we'd like you to see. That every breath, no matter where you may be, has oxygen in it that is provided by the sea. Not only that, our oceans feed us too and maintain our climate, keeping our planet nice and blue. But our ocean is changing. It's not always as it's being. And our impact is being felt whether or not it's being seen. So something must be done. What is it, you ask? I've got a solution for you if you're up to the task. Today, less than 4% of our ocean stands significantly protected, and we need much more than this for our impact to be corrected. And though this may be tough for us to understand, to be most healthy, our oceans need a break from man. There is an icy place that lies vastly untouched, and we have our eyes on the goal to leave it as such. Antarctica, holding sources of the ocean's foundation, a place so vast, though not even a nation. By proclaiming a space that humans cannot go, we'll have the opportunity to give the Southern Ocean plenty of space to thrive and grow. But to commit to maintaining the ocean in all of its glory, we need you to be a part of the story. To harness social media and help make the world more aware, for we believe if more people knew, more people would care. For every voice and every mind and every group and every kind. Act we can do for this place that is blue. It's desperately needed so that me and you can keep the ocean healthy, penguins gliding, and the ice frozen, and the fish multiplying. So tell your friends, co-workers, families, neighbors, prime ministers, senators, presidents, and mayors. We need everyone on board to protect the Southern Ocean Territory. And to make it all happen, we need you to dive in to be part of the story. So thanks for staying a couple of minutes with me to watch this video. This is a good example, pretty elaborate example actually of, of uh, some of the work that, that we want to do going forward with some of the different causes and, and supporting the, the cause and being also a great way to differentiate differentiate yourself from, from competition by offering these really cool and, and some of the videos we'll be creating going forward are not necessarily going to be uh, cause related but they'll be fun they'll be very lively so we're really excited about that um, but what we're really 
uh, excited about is having a partner like Capture Life and being uh, integrated uh, with Capture Life and offering you this great content going forward. Uh, 2020 is going to be a great year in, 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 uh, in so many ways, and uh, we're really looking forward to, to this new partnership. And um, thank you for spending a few minutes with me, and hopefully um, I'll get to catch the, all of you at SPAC. Have a good day. Thank you so much, Robert. And um, this is exciting stuff. And now I'm really um, in a great position here to actually be able to demo it um, so people can see it live. So thanks again for joining us today. So Robert provided a great overview of the partnership we have together and the products that are going to be available in the Capture Life Marketplace. Um, by the way, if you're interested in using this um, live with some jobs here uh, toward the end of the year here, um, let us know. Uh, you can email me at scottacapturelife.com. What I want to do is show you how this works in um, Capture Life through your account and what the consumer experience is. So I have a sample um, product up here, and I'm going to um, open up the different backgrounds or overlays that are available through 36 Picks. What's really nice is some of these may be backgrounds, some of them may be multi-dimensional, where there's a background, then you have the subject layer, and then an overlay to create a really rich-looking um, image. So I have a set here called School Life. This is really nice, realistic, um, you know, school settings. Uh, just to explore some other ones, there's a set here called Texture, very nice high-end texture backgrounds that look good um, regardless of what the, the kid happens to be wearing typically. Uh, there's another one that's kind of fun for um, just straightforward, you know, um, backgrounds called Studio Line. One of my favorites, especially if you're gearing it towards younger kids, this kid's corner. I mean, this is different, and I've seen these with a lot of different um, captures from different students, younger students, and it's a really fun one. By the way, you can select multiple combinations of these and offer them in uh, multiple sets um, to the same parent if you'd like. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the School Life one and just use that for my demo scenario here. And I have a job that I wanted to show you how this works. So I just did a, a demo elementary school job, and I have a sample order here ready to go that matches what you're seeing over the right on my mobile phone. So you'll notice that there's one image that's not watermarked. That was the one that was selected and purchased by the parent. They may have purchased this default background, or you as a photographer or lab may have offered this default one. But notice that the PNG file, maybe the 36 pics extracted for you, um, it has the subject without a background, and that's marked as premium. That doesn't show up in the user interface for the consumer until they start looking at the whole um, shopping experience for additional backgrounds here, which we're going to go into right now. So let's go through the whole consumer experience here. So this is what a parent would see when they first come into the app. Um, we let them know that they can share their memories with family and friends. What's nice is that means you have more people coming in to view this content and uh, potentially purchase. We also um, tell them that there are more backgrounds to purchase. They can tap the image to view and browse more backgrounds. And we point them right up to the option on the screen that tells them how to do that. And this is the way the whole experience gets orchestrated for them. You'll see that these, um, this opens in a very elegant display. Uh, there's a nice um, set of tool tips that come up that walk the parents through how to use the various elements on the screen, even though it's very intuitive. You should also know that we have screenshot blocking technology built into our app, so someone can not take a screenshot here. If they try to, it'll turn the screen black. So uh, you can know that your images are protected um, from that. But notice the great quality of these backgrounds, um, how awesome this girl looks against these different um, backgrounds that are available here. Just really, you know, really nice and elegant the way that 36 Pix has done this. And it's a great shopping experience here as well. So the parents can choose which ones they, they want. They can add it to the cart. Um, choose whatever, that's a nice one too. Add that to the cart. You determine the prices. So these are selling for $7 uh, a piece, but there's a discount of 10% if you buy more than one. And when they want to check out, they can just go ahead and go through the checkout experience. I have a just a demo account. Your logo would show here, by the way. 
So let me just put in the demo card here. And then, you know, they would put in the month and day. It's right before Christmas here. Um, and then they just purchased buy. And that's it. The image is purchased. Then they're told that those two images you purchased are being processed. And we refresh the screen um, when those are ready and we get them back from 36 picks. So now let's go in and take a look. So these are the images that were purchased. You see, they're now part of the whole um, album here for the customer. Great high res images. By the way, we can jump into the print store now and print those. So we have great images to, to purchase print products from. And then there's the original. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of how simple the workflow is and how you can drive more purchasing from these great products from 36 Picks and Visa V, the Capture Life app. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Robert. In the spirit of saving time, I'm going to move this along. For those of you who have listened to the Hanging Pixels podcast, you know I can go on and on about just about any topic in the photo industry. If you're curious, uh, after this uh, virtual conference is over, go listen to the Hanging Pixels podcast at your leisure. That is my last self-serving promo, I promise. Uh, let's go back to Scott and another one of my favorite photographers, Jim Alsup from LDS Photography. Great, so I'd like to welcome Jim Alsup from LDS Photography to this segment. Um, Jim and I have, have worked together, and our two companies have worked together for a little over a year now. So I think, Jim, what, this is our third season maybe under our belts together? Starting it out. is. Yeah, so um, Jim, welcome to Pulse. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Great. Um, Jim, I thought uh, just so the people participating, the guests today, get a little better understanding of your business, why don't you take a moment and, and uh, talk about LDS a little bit? Uh, we're just a regional photography company. We're not super big. We're not super small. We're just kind of, you know, for our region, we're the largest independent. We photograph a hundred and some thousand kids a year. Uh, we split those kids up between sports and schools. And uh, we offer your product on both sides of that. And it's going great so far. Great, great. And um, I know that when we first started talking to you um, back a little over a year ago, you were really looking to revamp your your packaging. It was based on some trends you were seeing in the in the market, um, feedback you were getting. So uh, why don't we start there and just um, talk a little bit about what drove that that kind of change to your, your packaging and pricing strategy. Well, we, we like being ahead of the curve in our market. You know, we don't want to be the third person in. We want to be the first person in. And we like to experiment and we like to be on the leading edge instead of going, oh, catch up. Because if you're the third dog in, your view is always the same, you know. So it's like we want to be out front. So my wife and I, April, we decided that we needed to offer others some other digital delivery besides just a CD or a thumb drive or offer something. And then we met you guys. We came to Nashville. And I think that might have been one of the first shows on the pro market that you guys were at. So we went down and looked at it, and we were convinced all the way home. We talked about you guys. and like, yeah, we got to figure out how to do this. So we came home, and we uh, incorporated it into our larger packages. We raised the price so we could get a bump on those. And then we offered it uh, separate, you know, with a strong market price. And uh, now we found that, you know, we get customers in, and they're hooked on it. So we've been along, we've used it enough times that we're getting kids in the sports market two or three times a year. We're getting school pictures because we photograph those same kids in their schools. And once they get that app, they want to keep it there. And, and I, you know, we, we couldn't do it any other way for us. It's worked out phenomenally. That's great. And can you talk a little bit more about the, um, the detail of your packages? I know you do um, your own printing, but your the strategy was to bundle um, print and digital. Um, so can you talk a little bit more about your, your packages? Sure. Well, we bundled the, the digital with our top packages. We didn't put in all of them. Our smaller packages, we left it out, or you could buy it individual. And we also offered a 24-hour package. So in our schools, if we photographed your kid and you paid with a, a cash or a credit card, that way we know we got paid. If you do it with a check and they bounce your check, you can't get your money. So you had to pay with cash and credit card. If you did, we actually downloaded our images, 
we took all those orders out and one person went and actually fulfilled those on capture life the next day so they got it within tomorrow like if i did it today you'd get it tomorrow if we did it on friday you'd get it monday and it went great the problem we run into is all my administration they would call and go hey we got all these parents calling complaining that so-and-so's got their pictures but they don't and the admin the secretaries are like well what do i tell them i'm like well tell them to order that digital package next time and it's a premium so we charged extra for the 24 hours so you could get it for 25 bucks and if you wanted the 24 hours it was 32 dollars and uh, we didn't have any issues with that at all. We, we charge a premium for it. And, you know, some people just want to pay and have it right now. Oh, sure, sure. And it, it's really interesting to hear from admins about something because you're, uh, you're actually delivering something faster and other people are, are wanting that. It's- yeah, face, Facebook and social media was our friend then because they would get it and they'd pop it right on social media. Then that covered everybody that followed them, you know, and you get – you know, 40 or 50 parents doing that and all the rest of them are connected to everybody else and it just it went crazy so we've seen since then it keeps increasing because people want it quicker you know and they want it they're going to pay for it in my world yeah you know it's interesting in an earlier segment um ryan uh owner at focus on forever talked about the amazon effect and you know getting more creative about how they can deliver uh, more immediately and I like what you did. You you split out what you could deliver quicker, and at least you know um, gave those people an option, um, even though the print may go through your you know a standard cycle still. So that's uh, that's clever. I like it. Yeah, it's worked for us. You guys use it. Go make some money. Yeah, <laughs> great. And uh, can you talk a little bit about how was that transition? Because when we talk to photographers, one of the um, one of the things that sort of stalls them a bit is making a change like you did. I mean, that was creative. We hadn't heard of someone doing that before, but you did it. Um, obviously, there there's always going to be a little, you know, um, with that change, there could be some bumps or whatever, but how did it go for you? Uh, you know, we've got a, a deal with us. You can hear my wife working in the background. She's the one who does everything around here. I'm just the, the, the beauty of the business. But uh, what, what we did is typically we sit down, we come saw you guys, we try to figure out what to do. We, we edged it in to begin with on a couple of shoots and uh, it went really well. You know, we had your, your marketing material that we printed out and, and gave to it, which worked really well. And then uh, once we got to it, it, it just kind of caught fire and just kept on going, you know. So with us, like I said, we're not afraid to try anything new. In fact, we're going to do some more new stuff with you here shortly, I do believe. And, uh, you know, we just like to be on that that cusp of it. So if there's, you know, if you have any fear about doing this, don't have any fear. You just jump in, you know. I'm not one sticking my toes in. I'm going to jump in and see how warm it is. So don't yeah. don't be afraid to try it. Yeah, you, you're reminding me that um, one of the things that, that always when you're implementing something new like that, the first season, there's going to be some natural changes. For example, we see it with the, the consumers. They're, they're getting a different experience. They may have some questions on that. So you may actually get a little bit of increase in communication with the customers over that. But what we've heard and what I, I look at all of our support cases, so I see yours um, you know, we, we really didn't have many at all this, this past fall season. And I think a lot of that is because your communication gets, gets better with these parents and then they just come to expect it. And, um, you know, those questions don't come. So I, my guidance to, to photographers or labs who are implementing, let it go through a cycle. It's, it's going to, any change like that is going to go through a cycle and then naturally I'm going to you're going to settle into a mode where your customers are going to have less questions on that. I don't think there's any issues because most people now have smartphones. I mean, I, the kids that are five have smartphones now. And by the way, they're way better at it than I am. <laughs> but, you know, when you see that, they're used to downloading apps. So that's just the way it is. So, you know, we worried about, well, they have to download a new app. Somebody's not going to want to do that. We had no pushback at all on the app. And now we have it the other way. It's like, oh, I love my capture life, you know, and like I said, we have multiple buys on it with the same people over and over. 
So once you get them stuck in there, it's kind of like we, we used to sell a whole bunch of uh, plaques, you know, with a picture on a plaque. And when you got those certain customers, once they bought three or four, then it became tradition. And it just kept re- the repetition was what kept them going. It's like, well, we've always gotten this. This is what we need to get. The good news is with digital, you can get it really reasonable. And you can sell it for a pretty good margin. And at that point, then you need to get them in. But we, we charge more for our digital than most people around here. And we don't have any pushback on it at all. None. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, we, we've talked about um, the Capture Life Marketplace. We're showing some of that during this Pulse event and the ability to take um, an individual capture and turn that, transform that into multiple versions automatically. You already do some of that, I see, with, with your images. You're, you're giving them more than just one background sometimes, depending on what package and, and some other transformations you do. Um, but I'm really excited to work with you guys on some of these marketplace um, options so that you can be offering even more after delivery sales, um, digital sales through the app. So, you know, with that, what what's next for, you, you're always innovating. So what's next for LDS as you look to 2020? Well, we're looking forward to being able to offer multiple backgrounds, uh, maybe the option of uh, some, because we don't proof anything. But it might be that if we can find a, like, I don't know what you guys call it, a soft proof that we can sell that's uh, guarded, like you can't screenshot it because we spoke about that. Um, You know, we can offer that. And the hard part, I think, is going to be for us is capturing our our customers' uh, information up front, you know, or during the shoot. So once they, if we can get them to opt in somehow, once they opt in, and if we can get majority of those, I think selling that way is going to be a lot easier. I think that it's, you know, because we can offer way more digitally than we can through a paper product. Right, right. And And that's what our customers are wanting. I mean, when's the last time you took out a wallet out of your pocket and showed it to somebody? (laughs) You know? I mean, I got one. Wallet. (laughs) Yeah, that's it. You know, I mean, I carry a picture that my wife and I took uh, 10 years ago in Florida, and it's all ratty and torn. I'm going to have to make a new one, but... I carry that. I got one and that's it, you know, but yeah, it's all on your phone. And if you don't realize that's what you got, then, you know, you're losing sales. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jim, I, I really appreciate you, you know, sharing your insights today with, with the attendees. And um, we really appreciate just working with you and, and just, you know, keeping on the pulse of the industry and, and you guys are always out ahead. So we, we really appreciate that. Hey, thanks for having us. I hope I helped anybody out. If you got any questions, they can reach out to me and I'm easily found. Great. Thanks, Jim. No problem. See you guys soon. Okay. Bye. Hi, folks. Scott DeFusco with Capture Life here. So in this segment, we're going to talk about a um, very specific workflow and use case related to action sports photography, and it utilizes the Capture Life Events app. So let's talk a little bit more about how this works, and then we're going to hear from a customer, Kevin Cook of Legends Event Photos, on how he's used this effectively in the field to make more profit from his events. So how did this come about? Well, we teamed up with our longtime partner, Glossy Finish, to come up with this new model for action sports where you can make money um, with action photos. Now, That may seem like an obvious thing, but those of you who have been in this space and who have done action sports photography know that it is tough to make money because most companies are using the wrong business model and they don't have the technology to streamline the process. So it not only becomes very labor intensive, but it's built on the old spray and pray model. That's what people have traditionally done. They've taken pictures of everybody on the field. And then they've thrown those pictures up online in a gallery, hoping that parents come and purchase images. We all know that that model doesn't work. And it's just been proven over time uh, to really push photographers out of the action sports photography space. But Glossy Finish has worked with a different model for years. They've always taken payment um, and only photographed the people who have paid them, their child. So that's a very different model, and it works. And so what they've done is teamed up with us to take what they've built over the years in building one of the most successful uh, action sports photography businesses in the world, 
And we've teamed up to build this new model that puts this all in the hands of any photographer. So we're going to talk more specifically about that. So the model is very simple. You actually take a payment using the Capture Life Events app from parents whose photographs you're going to take of their kids. So you're only going to photograph the people that paid you. So if you're shooting a game and you take payments from, let's say, five parents, then those are the kids you're photographing. So the app allows you to take the payment, um, enter the customer information, some information on the, the kid or kids that you'll be photographing, and then um, it's all taken from there. Then you photograph, you do what you're great at, and you photograph the kids whose parents paid for them to be photographed. After the game, you upload, do any editing you might do, uh, need to do, and then using the Capture Life platform, just push those orders out to right to the parent's phone. Now you have a direct connection to that parent on an ongoing basis. And what we've seen as well is that parent has access to your great work, your brand is front and center, and they're showing off those photographs to other parents so it becomes this referral network for you to get more work. That's how it works. It's a very simple process. But let's talk a little bit more about what's behind this model because there's a lot more to it than this, a lot more that you can harness. Number one, um, GF Crew is the brand behind this. So this is what um, Glossy Finish came up with as a community called GF Crew. And if you go to gfcrew.com, you will see all sorts of ways that you can join the community, leverage the community. There's, I believe we're over a thousand now members um, in the community. You're gonna find all sorts of great resources, um, videos, tutorials on how to make money using this method. In addition, you're gonna be able to download the app here. You're gonna be able to buy the starter kit, which we'll talk about a little more here in a minute and really have a, an ongoing connection with this great community. Um, so there's people here um, helping you to succeed at the model. And so we said it's no more spray and pray. So pre-paid sales only using the app. It, you have a square reader that you use to swipe and take the payment with the app. But there's some other things that are part of this model that Glossy Finish has developed that are really important to the success. For example, this starter kit that you're seeing here in the middle of the screen allows you to look like an event photographer, wear an official bib, you have um, credentials, you actually have uh, press pass credentials um, so with a, that includes a background check that Glossy Finish provides so that people know that you're a professional um, accredited photographer that has you know the credentials to back it up. There's also marketing material that you use with the parents, like a lanyard that the parent wears when their kid's being photographed, or rubber bands that you put around the kid's cleat so you know which ones you're photographing during the game. It makes it easy to, to identify them. All sorts of tools that come with a starter kit that make this model um, really effective. And then the app itself is a big part of the model. So with the app, you can quickly create customer um, and job information. So you add a job, you add a customer, their name, their phone number, their email address, some information on the subjects that you're gonna be capturing, and then you take a payment. You swipe their credit card right there, the transaction is registered, and that customer record is waiting for you after the game so that you can upload the photos to that customer in your Capture Life portal and deliver those images to the customer right on their phone. So it's a very simple and intuitive process. And the pricing is simple. There's no upfront fees. This is essentially um, free to use. We only get paid when you take orders. When you take an order, there's a 15% um, service fee. That's how we get paid. And then the rest is yours. If there are any print sales made after the fact, this is a digital first model, so you're delivering digital images, but Capture Life does have the print store in the app that allows um, print purchases to be made by the consumer at any time in the future, and the majority of those proceeds from the profit go right back to you as a photographer. So how do you, you can get started right away? Just go to GF Crew, sign up, um, get the starter kit, and download the app and get going making money with Action Sports. And I wanted to highlight um, Kevin Cook. Kevin Cook um, has been using this model 
and I'll introduce Kevin here so he can talk more about what they've done with the GF Crew model and the Capture Life Events app. So with us now um, for this segment is Kevin Cook, Legends Event Photography, and Kevin uh, and his company has been a customer with us for um, several years now, so we've had a lot of um, work together. Kevin has also been very progressive in the use of the platform when new technology or workflows come out. He's been ready to embrace those and, and has had some real success, so that's what we're here to to talk about today. So Kevin, uh, welcome to Pulse. All right, thanks Scott. Yeah, we're uh, excited for all the stuff Capture Life kind of brings to our business and uh, it's been great for us. So we're looking forward to it. Great, and for the people attending, just to get a, a better sense of your, your company, Kevin, because um, you, you do different types of photography, uh, it'd be great for you to just give a brief introduction of what your company does. Sure, um, so we started out primarily as like volume youth sports. And that's still the core of our business. So, you know, team and individual picture day. Um, off of that, we branched into some on-site printing events. Um, that's become a pretty big portion of our revenue over the, the course of the year. And then over the last three years, we've now kind of gotten back into the, the volume school underclass business. And so we uh, we had some schools of our own and we purchased an existing guy's uh, business. And we've integrated Capture Life into a lot of that as well. He was using some outdated digital delivery methods, you know, CDs and things like that. So um, we've kind of integrated the Capture Life model into everything we do to an extent because it kind of keeps us from having to deliver all these different ways. So we do a little bit of everything, um, uh, but, but volume is, is kind of the crux of what our focus is. Right. And related to that, your focus on volume you know, you've mentioned in the past that um, you, you've done action sports photography, for example, but there were some maybe operational and financial challenges to the, the previous model. Um, can, can you talk a little bit about, you know, how you were running the events before sure. from a business model and technical perspective? And then when you got introduced to the GF Crew model that we worked with Glossy Finish, our partner on, and the Capture Lake Events app, how you've used that at several events and, and sort of what the difference is between the two models. Yeah. So we've, we've done action like events for 15 to 20 years, going back to when we used to take laser printers and print proof books. And then we've tried every kind of software that's been out there. Uh, five minute photo, photo parada, uh, it, just using the express digital stations as viewing kiosks. We, we have tried it all. Um, even use some software now called Photability, which is, is still good software. But uh, what we kept running into was to have any sort of on-site viewing stations. Uh, you know, action photography has just changed so much in the last decade that to staff those events was just eating the profit, just eating it alive. And so we would we had a lot of revenue, but it took so much staff to... Uh, set up six to eight kiosks, um, you know, staff those kiosks, you know, somebody printing, all that stuff, it just ate into the profit. And, and to go on with that, you know, even no matter how many stations you set up, that was the limit to the number of customers you could serve at one time. I mean, at every, go to any ballpark tournament and all five fields get done at one time. And so 10 teams worth of parents walk by your booth. If you've got 10 iPads, you can only help 10 people. And so we just kind of kept beating our heads against the wall about how we can do less work for as much, if not more money. And so we had tried uh, a couple of options. We tried like just posting it to our website. That didn't work. Um, we tried everything. And so uh, we had already been partnering with, with you guys, Capture Life, on just like our regular digital deliveries when they, you guys came out with the, the first version of the, the smart events. We tried that. And then when they rolled out the GF crew model, we tried it at a, um, like a, it's one of those events you just have to do to get their T and I business. It's their end of the year jamboree. And I mean, we were basically doing really good to break even every year, but we had to do it to get the money part of the job. And so this past year we tried it and I think we took close to 30 signups. We charged a, probably a lower price point than what we should just because it was kind of a new thing. But, we went out there with just the three photographers and one lady uh, kind of helping the parents, you know, sign up and made, you know, almost as much 
revenue with probably half of the expense because I didn't take my trailer. I didn't get out my iPads. I didn't have a computer person. I didn't have a salesperson. Um, so profit wise, our profit on that particular job was much higher. Uh, you know, and the people embraced it because they've been getting their images from that league from us through Capture Life for several years. So the notion of getting their images from this event all digitally, you know, they, they were fine with it. So nobody once said, you know, well, you know, you've always printed this or you've always done that. Um, they just, they just ran with it. And so we've now used it um, at a couple other events. In fact, we just used it two weekends ago at a, at a similar event, but for a football jamboree. And we had about 40 signups at that, um, which was great because we're really there just to do the team photos. And it's another event that we have to do. It's like a conference wide championship game. And uh, same thing, you know, I cut my labor costs down, cut my employee costs down, uh, all the equipment we did not have to set up. Uh, so we were able to get there later, leave earlier. Uh, <laughs> you're not trying to stay after the last game to sell them the pictures you just took. And you know, we already had the money in hand. We came back to the office, you know, did some edits, uploaded, and we were done with it. So it's, it's been really great for us, you know, on certain events to really kind of keep the cost down. And, and we're making as much profit as we did before with probably half the work. So that, that's great. And, and you, you highlighted something that's worth, um, you know, elaborating on a little bit. And that is that your previously, if I'm understanding it right, it was a, it was a spec model. Um, you, would you get the orders in advance or would people come up and view afterwards or how did the model work? So we, we switched about five years ago to where they, the parent did have to pay a sign up fee, but then they still had to come after the game to pick out the images they wanted. So we really, that's another way it saved us is we had to deal with each customer twice. They had to come to our booth to sign up, give us money then, and then they had to come back to our booth after the game to pick out, that's the one I want on the poster. This is, this is what I want for this. So it's a little bit less of an investment on the customer's sake too, you know, cause they're, they're not really there for pictures. They're there for, you know, baseball game, football game. So it's like they were in and out of our booth in, I don't know, five minutes, you know, versus, I mean, we've had people stay at our booth for two hours, you know, cause we got 60 images of their kid and they're trying to whittle it down to the five they want on a, on a poster. So that you can see like, that frustration start to build. It's almost like you gave them too much of a good thing. So they, uh, it kind of made it a much slicker process for the customer too. We, you know, there's always some folks that, that kind of resist that change, but the majority were like, you know, this is much easier. You know, I just, I walk up, I don't have to look at the iPads, you know, uh, with the iPads, no matter what you do, they're hard to see. Um, so, uh, you know, it's just been a more efficient method for us and for the parents. So, uh, that, that, that's great. And you, you, um, I remember when we talked about this in the past, you mentioned there was another benefit that first tournament that you did that you were actually able to get behind the lens again. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I very rarely, I'm sure like, like most of the folks watching, you know, you know, as you, as your business gets bigger, you get to do less and less of what you kind of got into it to do. And that was the case with me. I, especially at these events, um, you know, I was kind of the maintenance man, you know, Oh, you know, Kevin, they walk, you talk me and, you know, the iPad, you know, eight, it's not picking up the signal or, you know, the photo printer, you know, did this or whatever. So I would just as soon get on the field and get called back off the field. So the couple of events that I've personally been at where we've used the GF crew model, you know, I've got to be one of the photographers, you know, because I mean, it's all, the only thing that can go wrong is the iPad. And so there's only one thing to kind of worry about. And, you know, that, we always have a backup for that. So um, it's let me go and shoot, which not only is enjoyable for me, like on a personal level, but it saves me money because I'm not, I'm not hiring that position out. Uh, so it's kind of a, a double edged sword for me. So it's great. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, um, I know that you've given us feedback that we are now incorporating. We've received feedback from you and a lot of other photographers. Um, and that's feeding into our work with, with glossy finish on the whole GF crew model. And we're going to continue enhancing that. So I appreciate the, the feedback that you've given us. And we're, we're excited to, 
to see this progress even more in the market, and hopefully um, you're excited about using it in even more events in the future. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, for uh, you know, for it to be like kind of the first iteration, I mean, it's already been a benefit, and so I, we, we've discussed internally amongst you know, my staff, you know, oh, it would be great if it did this, and then the next time there's a release, it's doing that. So we're excited to kind of see what else we can use it towards. You know, we uh, obviously during our off seasons, we'll take on all sorts of different events to kind of fill in our calendar. So we're already kind of looking ahead and saying, well, you know, this could help us do, you know, Santa photos. We do some like trunk or treat events. And some of those we do for like PR, you know, just in our community, or if it's a community we want to get into their business, we've taken on little events that normally we would not do because it would be too much headache to set up printers and set up these sorts of things but this kind of gives us an avenue to where we can take on some other styles of events um, and look at it and say okay well, we don't have to worry about taking all this stuff we can just go with a photographer and maybe an assistant and we can go do this event maybe we make money but you know a lot of those events we just look at as a way to kind of brand ourselves get our name out there so this kind of gives us a slick way to do that and we always look at these things as the more times we can engage a certain customer over and over again especially digitally we kind of look at it as building a, a portfolio with that client where um, we don't want them to shop around to another person um, you know where if they're on their personal capture life app on their phone you know they're seeing all these images over time that we've delivered to them whether that's their little league baseball a daddy daughter dance schools anything we want that to continually be coming from us so that they notice when whatever organization they're with doesn't do that and it's hard to do that in in prints because you know once they get framed even if you've watermarked it or if you've back printed it once it's framed that that that's really gone and uh so at least on that digital side they can constantly see i've got 15 pictures from legends event photo in clinton and you know, that way, if we show up at their event, they kind of, there's an expectation of what they're going to get from us. And so we, we look at all these things as um, just ways to continually just keep delivering images. It's almost like building up a, uh, like an insurance portfolio. We just want that longstanding relationship where it's like, hey, I know who those guys are. So we're, we're excited to, to see what it's going to do and kind of the different things we can do with it. Yeah, and you know, it's such an important point you're making about um, building your brand and, and keeping, you know, if, if someone's just using, you know, they use it one season, they may not um, realize that benefit like you have where it starts to build. And, you know, speaking of building brand, your, your free Virginia Tech hat is on the way to yeah. replace the hat you're wearing and wear a Virginia Tech hat. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Kevin, I want to really want to thank you for taking the time to, to be with us and sharing your insights, and we look forward to doing more with you in the future. Yeah, we're, we're looking forward to it. Thanks, Kevin. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye. Okay. As a side note, I just want to say that I have been having a blast since I joined the team at Capture Life. I want to thank all of the photographers who joined us today. They are all participating on their own accord. And I want to take a quick moment to thank, thank all of them for taking the time. I also want to mention that we did not have the time to bring Heather Sams on today's program, but Heather was kind enough to record a Capture Life Photographer Spotlight segment last month. When this is over, I encourage you to watch the Heather Sams episode of the Capture Life Photographer Spotlight series. Uh, it's on the Capture Life YouTube page. Heather is using the workflow that I will demo during the last segment and her comments during the photographer spotlight about the economics behind this modern workflow are incredibly insightful. So watch it at your leisure. Our last segment before the big automated workflow demo is with Walt Smith of Impact Images. Let's go grab Walt. All right, so we're on live now with Walt Smith from Impact Images. Hi, Walt, how you doing? Hey, GW, I'm good. How about you? Good, good. Well, I'm excited to have you on because uh, you're one of those guys. I've been with Capture Life for, uh, I think, 18 months now, and you were one of the first photographers to call me directly and 
uh, I loved it. You, know, you, you kind of made me nervous, but I loved it at the same time because you threw all these questions out at me. And, and I'm one of those guys that I really like to genuinely help people. And you brought a workflow problem to me. And for, for 20, my, my, my career in the photo industry has been solving workflow problems, right? I was handed 20 years ago, I was handed a film and chemistry lab that needed to go digital. And so basically I've been trying to solve workflow issues. And I absolutely love the project that you brought to me. Uh, I think today during this Capture Life Virtual Users Conference, um, I'm going to show, uh, you and I have been talking about this, but I'm going to show this, this new workflow that's going right from the camera out to Capture Life and the consumer and, and you know, cash in that model as well, the additional sales. So we'll see that in a little bit. Uh, but for now, um, I wanted to bring you on to this session because uh, you did bring me those questions and you've been thinking about these things now, obviously, from before I came on board with Capture Life. Um, and so uh, let's go back, let's rewind 18 months. It's when you first uh, came on board with Capture Life. And for many photographers, yeah, the bells and whistles that I'm about to show, those are all very cool things. But let's rewind back and, and can you just let me know how you got your start? Like, where did you pick off in your workflow and process? How did you just get started with digital and capture life? Well, we, we started with trying to deliver digital files probably way before almost anybody else at this level in my business. Um, I remember taking a lot of heat at a SPAC convention one year because I wanted to move towards the digital side of things and Everybody said, oh, you're crazy, you'll only sell one, and everybody will share it, and you'll never sell anything else, and nobody wants it. And I just said, I don't believe any of that. I, know I had done some focus groups, um, which I think is really important for, for photographers in the volume business to really understand your market. I did the focus group with 20 parents that did not buy pictures on picture day. I took them to dinner, sat down, talked to them for about an hour and a half, and the biggest reason they didn't buy pictures is because they didn't want any more prints. They've got a drawer full of pictures by the time their kid's 10 years old that they don't know what to do with. They wanted yeah. digital files. And I had been thinking that was the way to go and this just confirmed it. So that started me down the journey of realizing this generation of consumer, they want stuff at their fingertips and that's yeah. what I wanted to deliver to them. So we started selling digital files without getting into my own workflow and, and the packages, unless you want to do that, I'll be glad to. But uh, we started selling files of individuals and teams. And within six months of doing that, it was our number one seller. Mm -hmm. And we sell over 70% of every customer buys a digital package. And it's digital only. In fact, we've moved to some leagues now that we are doing digital only, period. So we were, yeah. we were using a download method through Zenfolio on our website. We give them a code, they go download, get their prints because they've already paid or their, their files because they've already paid for them. And it just led to more and more problems. People couldn't understand the download process. They didn't get it right. They lost their code. While it was a good theory and a good way to deliver the product, it was just more time consuming and cost us more work. So when you guys came out and I saw you, I was like, oh my God, this is exactly what I've been looking for. I need a digital delivery solution. It's easy, simple, and foolproof. And that's where you guys come in. And ever since we jumped in, it's just been crazy with you. When we yeah. saw, again, you've seen our sales numbers. You know how many things we're running through there every month. Yep. And I, um, I certainly appreciate the point that you just made about it because again, in, in the Minneapolis area where I, I had a similar business running youth athletic photography, you know, we had we had a download system access lookup codes and really that's causing more work on the consumer right exactly. as you said headaches for your own customer support team because you have to work through with a customer on the online i just i think that with today's mobile consumer and and the ease of use of just about everything in our lives these days right the, the design is good uh we're, we're just getting it's real fluid and real dynamic and so i i Certainly uh, appreciate you coming on board with Capture Life and making that transition. And it's very refreshing to hear that it's been a, a good transition for you from a, a technology that you had in place in your workflow to Capture Life. Um, let's rewind just a little bit. How did you let customers know that this change was happening from an older system of digital delivery to this more modern system? 
Well, anytime you need to bring something new to your customers, it's always about education. So how can we get information to them easiest, simplest, less confusing way as possible? So we put, I made a banner, uh, you know, seven foot pull up banner about digital files and why you should think about buying digital files instead of prints. And we had seven key points listed on it and it's sitting right there next to our sample table at league day. So everything they need to know about digital files and the advantages of capture life. Not only are you getting your files easily and quickly, but what it can do for you in the future. It can organize your phone, your photos on your phone. It can keep your kids photos in separate folders. So when you need them later, you know, they're in seventh grade now, by the time they're a senior and you want to pull up all those senior pictures for a senior video, it's right there in the Capture Life folder. Yep. So it's just about educating them, one, what it can do for them, two, how easy it is, and three, what a convenience it all is not to have to deal with anything else except a couple of clicks on your phone. So we made the banner. We also made little business cards. Every person, when they check out at the table, if they bought the digital package, we give them a little card that says, hey, you bought digital files. You're going to get a text that says your capture life, uh, your photos from impact images and capture life are coming. Watch out for a text. This will be the number that it comes from so that they don't think it's junk or spam. And it just reminds them, oh, my digital files are coming. Yeah. Previous and that's that, oh, sorry. Pre previous to that, we would deliver back a little uh, card with a download code from our website when we delivered back all the other pictures. The other great advantage that people are loving with capture life is now, as soon as that order hits the lab for, excuse me, for uh, prints, the Capture Life order goes out immediately. So they get their pictures way before anybody else that orders prints, and it's so simple. Yeah. The other thing we show them on lead day, if they have any questions or don't understand it, is all my staff will pull out a phone, open up the Capture Life app, show them what a picture looks like, show them how you can just go order a picture with such total ease. Yeah. And they're just blown away with the technology. Yep. Um, so... We certainly have seen, and, and you've been very successful with Capture Life, and we've seen this with um, with other photographers. It, again, it's the information that you get to your customers on picture day, uh, letting them know that it's going to be delivered digitally. That certainly uh, leads to success on the back end with your customers getting there, knowing uh, how the images are going to come to them. Uh, and as you mentioned, it's it's almost self its own self-marketing platform when these customers are getting these images on their phone mm -hmm. uh, ahead of any other products. Again, as consumers, we're starting to get used to this, the, the everything happening right away, right? right? We live in the serve me now generation and this kind yeah. of needs. <laughs> yeah. Um, and your, your customers, they've received Capture Life well, I mean, as far as the, the this storage system, having the images in one place on their phone? People, are, our feedback is people love it. People great. absolutely think it's the greatest thing. And now that we've been through a whole year and we're starting in the second year, the second cycle, there are parents that walk up and they don't even look. They just grab an order form, capture life. And if, if they hear us talking to another parent, like my person on the sample table will be answering questions about digital files. And the parents that already have it, like, oh, you'll love it. It's the greatest thing. Just do it. Super simple. So now that, now that parents are starting to market to the other parents for us because they've seen it, they've shared it, they know what's going on. If they hear questions being asked, they'll chime right in. And it's been great. You had mentioned, you mentioned another thing that I, you know, I don't think we, we hit on often enough, but um, you had mentioned your customer service staff having some issues before with the older system. Has that gotten better as well? It's eliminated. I mean, the, the only, before we'd have so many problems. Oh, I, I can't, I don't understand the download or the, through the process they were using was in Folio. If you made any mistake or typed in the code wrong, that code was invalid. So we had to start over, give them a new code. We ended up just emailing them the picture in the first place, <laughs> which is what we were trying to avoid. Yeah. I would say we probably had anywhere from 35 to 45% of those transactions were a problem. We would have to contact, either that customer would contact us via phone or email and we would have to deal with it. We were spending way too much time it defeated the whole purpose of what mm -hmm. we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and now we, the only issue we ever have now is I didn't get my text or I didn't get the email. Um, and so it's super simple in the Capture Life app to, or the, the back office just to resend it to them. And we'll tell them, hey, watch your phone. We'll send it right now. And usually they'll just stay on the phone with us and they get it. Oh, yeah. Or they'll find it in their junk folder if they prefer the email delivery method. Yep. 
But other than that, there's no problem. And it's just one click for us to fix it and send it back out to them. Yeah, that's that's the benefit of that cloud-based service, right? It's oh, you yeah. make you make an adjustment and it, it it is fixed on the customer's phone immediately, right? It's just it's all cloud-based. So yeah. Exactly. And the other nice thing, you know, I don't know if you've touched on this in other segments or not, but if there's an error in it, like a data entry error, or something's wrong, we have to make a correction and send it back out to someone. Again, it's just, you know, we can do it in a click. It takes 10 seconds to send it to someone. Upload it, click send, off it goes. Yep. No more having to contact, no more having to re-email, attach it to an email. All that. It's just, this is so much simpler. Such a time saver. Um, the, the last thing I wanted to touch on before uh, jumping into this workflow that I think you're going to love the demo coming up here in just a moment, but um, you've also embraced this idea. I think this is a more modern idea of high-end content delivery to your, your customers. There's some legacy costs that we have in the photo industry where I think it goes back to film where we had one piece of film that was kind of expensive to, to produce. And so we, we were hyper concentrated on taking one good picture. And then, you know, we guarded that one good picture and that's all we ever had of this kid. And, and we would try and you know, sell that out to um, parents, but you embrace this idea of let's take this picture and turn it into uh, more content, right? Multiple iterations of the same picture. You're using Wes and NextGen to uh, create these, I, I've seen them, they're these incredible digital packages, right? With crazy backgrounds and graphics and overlays. That That's a very modern take, I think, on this uh, as far as the industry in itself and how we need to move forward as, as photographers and what we're providing to our consumers who are, are now getting used to this multitude of content, right? Um, how do you sell that level of content um, on picture day? I mean, how, how do you present that to your customers? It's pretty simple. You know, there's, there's people that just want the basic package. I want my kid's picture and I want a team picture. No different than if it's prints. It's yep. just the digital view of that. So we have that. We have we have two different packages. We have a basic, which gives you just that. You get your individual file and you get a team file. But if you want more than that, we obviously can give you more than that. So we are we have a bigger package, a bigger digital package, the grand package, um, that has four digital files in it. It has a different background for the kid, a different template, a different product. When it's digital like this, especially with working with, with Wes and NextGen and, and marrying it all together, it's nothing for you to create five different products that you can send out. Yep. You, know, you can send up to nine things and one capture life order. You can send right. more than that, but you know, the basic capture life order is up to nine files. So why not give them nine files? It costs you virtually nothing more. It's a great perceived value for the customer and all that does is increase your revenue. And I think that's important. That since we started selling digital files, everybody you know, told me that the conventional thinking was, you're not going to make any money, you're going to lose money. Our average sale is up $6, and our participation is up as well. So if you're not selling digital files, and if you're not using Capture Life, you're sitting on the sidelines, and somebody like me is going to come run by you. <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more. And, and again, we've been watching trends in this industry. Uh, you're certainly up on all of these trends again you've been pushing us i will thank you again for doing that right because uh, capture life is definitely a forward-thinking company and platform and, and we certainly appreciate having photographers like you uh, help us keep this this machine churning and, and turn this in it, not just capture life but the industry in itself into what it needs to become next right we, we certainly appreciate the feedback and, and all the pushing so thank you yeah, well you know, in this business, you can't survive unless you have good partners working with you. So I need you guys as much as you need us. You know, it, right. this industry, there's one way to survive. You either evolve or you evade. You keep pushing forward or you get out. <laughs> yeah. you know, evolve or evade, you can, you can do that kind of stuff with Capture Life, Next Gen, and other partners that are out there that are always forward thinking and pushing and pushing and pushing. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to sit back and be watching everybody else do it. And I'm not yeah. interested in that. I appreciate it, Walt. I appreciate you coming on. Stick around because... Uh, what we're going to see next is that sneak peek around the corner of what we're working on at Capture Life. And, awesome. and, and again, it's, it's this 
the idea that we're plugging companies together. It's no longer this everything is mine, I'm gonna hold on to this model. You just mentioned it. You grab this high quality content from Wes and NextGen, you take Capture Life Delivery, what we're gonna see happens to work with Canon cameras in this seam seamless fashion. And uh, this is, again, what I believe this is, what we're all leading towards, this, this plug and play nature of taking all of these wonderful companies, putting it all together and providing ultimately consumers a product that they want. And as you mentioned, that they're gonna pay for. I can't wait to see it. I'm so excited. Thanks, Walt, appreciate it. All see right, you. take care. All right. Bye-bye. All right, it's now time for my session where I'm gonna demo this awesome cash to camera to consumer workflow. As you know, I've been working in the volume photography industry for 20 years. I ran a production lab in a large, very forward-thinking youth athletic photography company. And I cut my teeth developing software stations and digital workflows way back in the early 2000s. What I'm gonna show you is most certainly a workflow of tomorrow, and it's most certainly available today. This all started when Mike Gurley and the development team at Canon sent me a camera that has the Canon CP, CC API enabled. The Canon CC API is another example of how uh, modern companies are developing these open systems that all play nicely with one another. Again, opening doors between talented teams of software engineers like we have at Capture Life in the very powerful cameras and lenses created by Canon. I'll say it one more time. In this day and age, with technological transformation happening at an accelerated rate, don't put all your eggs in one basket, especially when we have these open platforms connecting companies like Canon directly to 36 picks through Capture Life. Again, together we're going to solve the issues that we face, and I find it hard to believe that any one company is going to figure out our evolving mobile consumer. All right, let's dive in. So Mike Early sends me this camera and I write some code. I created a demo machine of sorts uh, that shows off this modern uh, camera to Capture Life consumer workflow. Again, because Capture Life has an open API, anybody could have written this code. In this case, I'd been working with volume photographers who wanted a fast uh, data entry system where they could deliver Santa photos right to customers right then and there at the Santa photo shoot. So I wrote some code, plugged it into the Capture Life API, and I'm proud to say that photographers are using this system live in the field at malls across the United States and Canada this holiday season right now. When I connected the Canon CC API to Capture Life, I quickly realized that the little Santa routine that I had written applied to just about every workflow in the industry. I could take a photo and send it to a customer's phone in a matter of seconds, right then and there while they were still at the photo shoot. After I had created this workflow, this demo machine, Mike and his team at Canon invited me to meet them in Orlando and demo this workflow at IAPA, which is a giant international trade show for resorts, attractions, zoos, uh, cruise lines. There were, if you can imagine the uh, Orlando Convention Center, there were roller coasters, uh, and set up inside in VR machines and, and people dressed up as mascots, gorillas crawling around on the floor, food vendors, snow cone machine sellers. If you think the photo industry is crazy, you should really try the resorts and attractions and cruise line industry. But the, the demo that we did at IAPA is, um, is what I wanna show you today, this idea that we could launch any workflow uh, right from an iPad, uh, whether you're coming off a cruise ship or off of a zip line or from a live music event, a character meet and greet, this new camera to capture life to consumer workflow basically uh, solved all of these um, potential workflow issues and really fit into this modern uh, customer journey where the image landed on their phone basically in real time. Today, in the spirit of the holiday season, I'm gonna stick with the Santa Claus workflow. I'm gonna run the first demo using a Santa Claus workflow. Again, we've got photographers at malls and in stores today using a modified version of this workflow. It didn't have the Canon camera uh, connected as part of this workflow there, but they're certainly using a modified version today. So I'm gonna click on this Santa demo, and I'm gonna enter the child's first name in this case, I'm going to be Tom Woodward. And I'm gonna type in an email address. Um, 
today. Uh, really, the um, when I do these demos, I've sent so many to my phone that uh, the uh, deliveries to my phone are starting to get a little bit crowded. So I'm going to send it to my e to my email address. Uh, this, of course, could be right to uh, customer's phone through text message. Could be email. Can be both. Um, I'm going to tap Boop Santa on the nose, and I'm going to fire this Canon camera all through this uh, Open API. All right, camera took my picture. You can see it show up here on the iPad. You're seeing on my screen both the iPad and my phone. And in this case, I'm going to click this uh, Create Holiday Cards button because uh, today's consumer is uh, becoming very used to this rich content. They've, uh, I'm sure you've all seen by now what mom's able to do on our iPhone. Um, and as photographers in this modern mobile era, we need to keep up. We, not, we don't just need to keep up. We need to jump ahead, take the work away from mom so she doesn't have to go into Snapchat or Instagram and actually deliver a digital product that the customer wants. Again, this is part of this modern mobile uh, experience. And what you see just happened here is on this iPad, um, that image that I just took, again, that was all magic, wireless, uh, through, made possible through those open APIs. These images are now showing up on this iPad. And you can see we've generated this rich content uh, for the holiday season. And now I'm going to actually send this uh, directly out to my phone so they all come out in the same delivery. In a Santa Claus workflow, of course, you could have swiped a credit card ahead of time, charged for that whole digital package, uh, that rich content, uh, hits Capture Life, and of course it's instantly available to share. So basically the kid's getting off of Santa's lap, uh, grabbing mom's hand, and this delivery is happening to mom in real time. So it went from the iPad, camera, uh, all the way out to the consumer's phone. So let's go through this consumer journey, the, this delivery to the customer's smartphone. If I go to my email uh, and I get this link, this one says from Gold Photos, your digital photos have arrived. Now this came from the Santa Claus photographer. I'm gonna click on view my photos. And what we're gonna see is this uh, modern mobile consumer journey. Here's the picture that was delivered to me. But I also have these uh, additional pictures that uh, were generated through Capture Life. And you'll see uh, how this is incredibly uh, rich content that we were talking about before. But what just happened here was this Macy's ad popped up. And now this is incredibly important for uh, tomorrow's photographer. And, and when I say tomorrow's photographer, I'm talking to photographers on a daily basis. I had a meeting today specifically about Santa Claus photography and a young and aggressive photographer who says, I'm going to take this uh, advertising campaign and not only am I going to sell uh, marketing material, or excuse me, not only am I going to sell the photos and this rich content that I just showed you to my customers, but I'm also going to sell uh, marketing campaigns to, to the shopping mall. If you can imagine the kid getting off of Santa's lap, grabbing mom's hand, mom has her pictures delivered right to her phone, the rich content she can share with family and friends. But the photographer is also contracted with uh, some of the stores inside the mall. And these stores are paying the photographer for that one-to-one -one mobile marketing. We know mom's in the mall. We can send her messages like this uh, directly to her phone while she's still at the mall. And this can really start to drive consumer behavior. Now a photography company has modernized itself to the point where you're making money on the photos and you're making money on advertisements that you've sold uh, to the stores in the mall. And this is these advertising campaigns are something that even the largest uh, marketing and advertising agencies in the country are having difficulties with this one-to-one -one mobile marketing. You've got this now in your toolbox stand to make a, a considerable amount of additional revenue. Um, I'm going to take you back out while we were talking another uh I got this push notification that said limited time, take 20% off holiday gifts, use code TREE20. So now mom's back at her home. This push notification could have been triggered at any time. 
and now she's in the comfort of her, home, her own home. We're talking about this modern mobile shopping experience, this Amazon-like experience. And I click on that. Of course, it takes me out to the print store. And from here, I've got my images. I've got my rich content. I've got my coupon code, excuse me, to take 20% uh, off. Use code TREE20 to take 20% off. I'm going to scroll down here to my ornaments. Of course, these go hand in hand with the holiday season. Um, as you can tell, this is now this modern mobile consumer experience where the photographer is going to make money on uh, the photos that, that this whole system, you could have swiped a credit card on the front end and charged a sitting fee. Photographers are going to make money uh, on the back end with by sending these images directly to customers phone generating this rich content. Look at that as a, as a Christmas tree ornament. I don't know who'd want me on their Christmas tree, tree ornament. But it does look great. Um, you know, you can set the photo from anything that was just delivered, and you've got these spectacular looking products in the print store. I'm going to go back to the Capture Life app. Again, I'm demoing this modern mobile experience, but not just the consumer side of it, or I should say it's part of the consumer side of it. We've got this persistent news card. Again, you've got marketing that you can sell directly to uh, the stores in this mall. From my perspective, this is absolutely game changing uh, for volume photographers. I think you could state the case that you deserve photos at any mall or any store because you can deliver uh, this one to one mobile marketing package as well. And on the back end, you've got this Amazon like consumer experience where uh, your customers are able to customize products from the comfort of their own home and uh, and really uh, have the orders shipped directly to their door, just like any other Amazon delivery. All right, um, I'm going to take you through one more uh, example. I'm going to log out of this Capture Life account here, and we're going to go back to our iPad. And this time, I'm going to do a youth athletics example. This one's super cool because it's more of this product customization at the digital level that's absolutely incredible when this stuff is happening on the fly. I'm going to type in my name. This is important for this demo, this name. I'm going to, again, use an email over a phone. And I'm going to create a new email address so I get a fresh delivery. Uh, again, I flipped the camera so we've got a horizontal picture. This time I'm going to click the button. Awesome, cool pose. Reads the, the file from the camera there. Okay, excellent. Got my game face on. And this time I'm going to click Create Awesome Stuff. And we're going to see this from the uh, youth sports uh, photography perspective. Um, it's going to be the same process where uh, the images uh, shot again, this magic connection between Capture Life, the Canon CC API. We fired the camera right from the laptop. We took this photo. The delivery is going to go right out to the phone, and we're going to have this incredible rich content that's generated. Again, if I'm a youth photog a sports photographer at this point, I'm going to think about taking these pro uh, products, and I'd actually like to sell these ahead of time at a photo shoot. Uh, you can imagine this as, as its own digital package, right? Where, look at that. So I've got a trader card. You saw me type in my name. That's where where that TW Woodward comes from on the side. We got this super cool uh, uh, templates, overlays, customized TW Woodward superstar. Uh, we've got all these different looks. You can imagine how this would look uh, in a photo booth scenario, right? This is just another workflow that comes out of the magic of these two companies, uh, these two CCA, or excuse me, the two APIs playing nicely together. So I'm going to send this in uh, to Capture Life as well. Uh, we'll get that loaded. That's sending up to, to my image, or excuse me, to my Capture Life delivery. All right, let's go back to uh, my email. We'll check for our delivery from Gold Photo Athletics. There it is. I'm going to view my photos. 
It's going to take us back into the Capture Life app, and we're going to see this, uh, again, this elegant image delivery. There it is. Boom. Uh, pop up from Dick's Sporting Goods, flash sale up to 50% off. This start shopping ad would go out to Dick's Sporting Goods. I've had conversation with photographers that said they can uh, go out and make these connections with some of their local stores. Again, this is opening up uh, your photography business to what's right around the corner and how this stuff not only works for the consumer, but 50% uh, off coupon for Dick sent right to your consumers is actually a tremendous benefit to them. So again, we're talking about that mobile consumer engagement and consumer experience. So when I click on this picture, you're going to notice that my phone screen went completely blank. Now, this is intended. This is actually a Capture Life security system blocking uh, what is considered premium content. In this case, as a photographer, I wanted to sell these images. Okay, I'm trying to get this so we can don't get that glare. There it is. And so as you can see, it's labeled premium. The reason you're seeing my phone on my screen, this, this recording session, as black is because screenshot blocking has been completely disabled. Uh, can't take a screenshot due to security policy because now the this set of rich content has been delivered right to the customer. And now in this case, it's additional uh, content that the customer can purchase right from their phone. So I can add that to cart. I can buy all for $15.97 as a digital package and then go through this checkout process. As you guys can see, this is a very modern uh, mobile uh, consumer uh, process. Capture Life was designed from the ground up from the consumer perspective. I'm going to close by saying that the photo industry has been blamed for being slow to adapt to our changing customer. In many cases, we're still delivering uh, the same or similar products as were delivered 100 years ago. And as the smartphone companies, and as Gary Pajau pointed out, mainly Apple, Samsung, and Google wage this camera war with smartphones, our customers' expectations of speed and quality and the consumer experience are all going to change. Ask anyone in the music industry what Apple did to, to them. Ask anyone in the newspaper industry what mobile is doing to them or magazine industry. Uh, the examples are numerous. Um, at Capture Life, we've got youth athletic photography companies that are chomping at the bit to use this system. They want to use it to sell against uh, other companies in their area. Uh, asked us to create a presentation that uh, will help them make the competition, competition feel old and outdated. And we all know that landing a league or a school is, is the only way to get the business. So uh, I have a feeling that these companies with this new modern mobile message uh, could really clean up on the competition. We've got wedding photographers that are delivering their images through Capture Life. Uh, they're ecstatic that they can use their the same Canon cameras to shoot the wedding and with a slightly modified workflow, rearrange the, the camera and the setting and the same camera can be used uh, is a photo booth scenario. Um, and we've got, as I've been mentioning throughout this presentation, uh, several Santa Claus photographers out in malls right now using a modified version of this workflow. Uh, they didn't require the, the Canon camera, the CCAPI enabled camera, Canon camera. They're using the capture workflow today with their current cameras, whatever the brand, whatever the make, whatever the model. Uh, this all goes back to this open API platform, of course, and the Capture Life marketplace. And what we can do together as solution providers, pro labs, software companies, camera companies, uh, and professional photographers, uh, we all need to work together to meet our consumers out on their mobile devices and deliver this exceptional mobile experience that our customers want. At the start of the school photo season this past fall, I asked every photographer the same question. What's your mobile digital strategy? How do you think your customers are going to change this year? And what about in three years? And what about in five years? And more importantly, what's your plan to hit this moving target? And my simple answer to uh, all of them was, you know what? You just need to get started. All of the photographers that you heard speak today 
they've started down this path. They understand that the consumer is changing and they've all jumped on board because they realize that we need to solve this problem together. Each company is doing what they do best and each company is concentrating on their specialty, whether that's workflow automation or print production or image extraction, graphics creation, or shooting high quality digital portraits in a high volume environment. As a photographer, you just need to get started and together we're gonna to open these doors to this next version of the modern photo industry. Thank you for attending today's virtual users conference. I'd like to thank all of the photographers and industry leaders for sharing their experience today. I know that they're all willing to connect with you and answer any questions. Uh, and if you picked up on anything today, I guess the most important message is um, we want you to get started. Jump on with us. Jump on this mobile journey. Let's find out where the customer is going to be. I think together we're going to solve these issues and uh, together we're going to create this next version of the modern photo industry. Thank you.